Hello, you guys. How are you all? Thank you guys for being here. Let me see. Um, hey, Crown Sleuthin. Hey, Petunia. Hey, Sexy Wild Thing, Carol Freaking Claws. Hey, Hippie Chick. Nady. Hey, MK. Hey, Pepper. Hey, Neat Noodle. Hey, Candy Cane. Thank you. Hey, Legendary. J Lord. Punksy. Hey, Katrina. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you guys for being here. No, thank you. No, thank you. Sorry, you guys. Um, Hey, Princess Megan Elsa. Hello, headphones. Hey, J Bro Chica. Oh my gosh, so good to see you guys. Holy cow, you guys. It has been freaking busy. Hey, B Crumbs, Jessica Stewart. Um, hey, Mal. It's been a busy couple of days here. We had a football game that was far away. And as soon as I got back, I started doing this. So let me explain to you guys. I'm about to bring up two really awesome people. But first, so I had been, another channel had put out the interview with Landon and the video is actually in the description box and I wanted to find a way to talk about it, but I wanted to, you know, not use the video. So I went in and transcribed the video today um, now or the interview, most of it. I didn't get to like the very end, but I think I got the, ver the most interesting parts. There are some major, major things in this. This was her interview on January 28th. 2020 at El Paso County Sheriff's Office. So um, we are going to go through that. We're going to, you know, just read through it together and have a discussion around that before. I thought it would be fun to do this before we start digging into the case file. And I'm really excited for that. But let me bring up my awesome guest. Hello, you guys. Hello. How are you all? Good, good. I'm actually going to jump off and pop back up on my computer rather than my phone. But I'll see you all very soon. Okay. Okay, bye. See you on the other side again. <laughs> <laughs> ah. No, not in Letitia's voice. So this is Gannon's mom. And um, it took me about several hours to do even this much. In the very end, I haven't finished. But um, there's a lot in it. There is like... Yeah, there's some major things that I think that will be good for us to talk about. What did you think? What do you think about it, Jen? Um, before we started, anything you want to say? Savvy I thought I thought there I thought it was a very interesting um, interview. Uh, I thought Landon had some really great insights. Um, one of the things that I really appreciated um, about Landon's interview was the way that she described who Gannon is, was, is, um, because most of the time when the situation like these occur where a child goes missing, what you often, the, the police, they want to know, does the child have the history of this? Do you know what, but, and those are all important details, but through the course of the interview, the, in, um, the investigating officer asked a little bit more deep and probing questions about Gannon. And I found that we, it just gave a glimpse into who Gannon was. And there's, I mean, I got to tell you guys, uh, Landon, you got, I give that woman all the props in the world, which even seems like, like a, like a lame kind of word to use. I just, she's, she, you know, under the circumstances, she kept it so together and made sure that the officers got the information that they needed so that they would have a direction in which to go to look for Gannon. And that is so very important. You know, I think, you know, it might, people might want to be a little critical because she isn't crying. And the truth of the matter is um, when you're in situations like that, you think that you would cry because you're so afraid. But I remember when my little uh, mini Bendy, who just turned 18 yesterday, you guys, I know it's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, she had a febrile seizure uh, when she was like 18 months old. And I was scared to death, but I did not cry the entire time. I didn't cry on 911. I didn't cry in the ambulance with her. And I did not even cry when she stopped breathing because the doctors had left the room. They were going to give her a spinal tap and they had left the room to go 
do the orders or whatever. And it was just me and this male nurse. And I was standing next to her bed and he was standing on the other side. And he said, he, we both looked at each other at the same time. And he said, she doesn't look like she's breathing, does she? And I said, no, I was just about to. And they had to intubate her. And even through all of that, I did not cry. Um, yeah. Because I knew that I was the only person that could speak for her in that moment. And if I fell apart, they weren't going to be able to get the information they needed to help her. So, yeah, yeah it was scary. Like, yeah, it scared the shit out of me. I think you I think you're more likely to cry after people don't realize that because you're kind of like in shock and. Um, Oh, I do. Oh, yeah. Before I forget you guys, there will be parts of this. There are some pretty shocking things that we have not heard about before that Landon says that might make you mad. And just for that purpose, I grabbed, I made some new emojis. I made the hold my earrings emoji. So there's little earrings. And then um, <laughs> <laughs> we still have the easel, evil hussy and thanks Letitia emojis. But then um, I made a sexy dolphin and a smoke break a sit like because you know we're gonna need a smoke break on during this because it's some shit we're gonna go through but um yeah so anything you want to say uh curious jen before we get started no no i'm looking forward to it okay damn jen i can't believe that happened to bendy and y'all are looking little bendy that's very scary. I'm glad she's okay. And I'm, I hope she had the best birthday. Oh, she did. She had a fantastic time, you guys. 18 is a big one. But yeah, she scared the crap out of me. Really, she did. And I don't even think, to be honest with you guys, I don't even think I cried until I got home after she was released from the hospital. I think right. I, I remember being in the shower and just being so thankful oh. and that it was this she was okay and that it was over um, that I just bawled in the shower. I'm a very private crier anyway. Right. But um, there were, I do remember back when all of this happened there, that people were uh, social, on social media, they were a little critical of uh, Landon because she wasn't crying. And I, I just wanted to say that, you know, when you see the interview, um, you, you really understand what she's, you can hear that she's upset. You can hear that she is scared, but she's keeping it together so that she can give them all the information they need, which I just, yeah. you know. Well, there are parts I, pr I probably wouldn't have played if it was my channel, which is another reason I wanted to type it up because of that, because she's grieving very hard. There's clips where, you know, the police are not in there and you have her in the room alone on the phone, praying, sobbing, crying. She's like holding on to her last. Oh, yeah, she's just going through it. You can tell. But um, she was. At, yeah, I forgot about that. The the breaks. She was like crying and very upset. Um Oh my gosh, there there was something else I was gonna say and it totally left my mind. Shit. Well, if it comes back to me, I'll let you know. Dang it. Mm. Oh, it was something that she. Oh gosh, I, I thought I had it, but <laughs> I don't think I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope you never change. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll try, but same to you guys. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a hot mess express. But okay. So, anyways, she's in the interview room with her brother Brandon, and um, he speaks up a couple times. And if there are any like spelling errors and stuff, I was rushing through this, and so just know that there probably are but that's just because i was trying to it you know it took hours and it's just a long interview and there's a lot to it and there's several parts you can't really understand you kind of have to re-listen to a couple times um but so Ed, i'm gonna skip through the introduction she you know they ask Detect, I'm Detective Bethel. Obviously, I work in the sheriff's office. I want you guys to know you're here voluntarily if you need a break, that kind of thing. You know, we're going to talk about your son, Gannon. They get names, addresses, birth dates, things like that from Landon and her brother, Brandon. So this, oh, yes, what I was going to say, I remember now. See, I knew it was going to come back to me. I was shocked because she truly knew from the beginning, pretty much. She absolutely kind of had an idea. Now, she, I don't think she expected it to be what it was that, but she knew that it, Letitia was involved. You know what I mean? From the beginning. Yes. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She um, said, like, what did she say at one point? We'll get to it. But it's like, you know, she wouldn't do this. It, it, 
It would be so that might be in the one with Al, actually. She would give him to somebody else like the way. But she still believes she was involved. And you guys will hear like from the beginning, pretty much. OK. Truth Seeker says. Hold on. So is this the video of Landon's interview? Yeah, we well, I transcribed it. So we're just going to talk about parts um, and the videos in the description box. OK, so Detective Bethel says, so tell me what you understand about Gannon being missing. <clears throat> and Landon says, so from my understanding, Gannon missed school on Monday and um, went missing some portion, left his home right before four. She was all shaken up. So some of this is kind of choppy. That's just how she was speaking at the time. It was an emotional, rough day, obviously. But she says, I didn't know about any of this. I found out about 11 o'clock our time. I was called by my dad, which was called by Albert to let him know Gannon was missing. I proceeded to call Albert. Albert was in Oklahoma. I found out he was with Tisha. He was supposed to get on the flight back, which he didn't make it. From my understanding, when Tisha messaged me about Gannon, he was seen on ring doorbell, was seen at the come and go. She was concrete set on it. And supposedly last night they saw him on a highway with a group of people. And no one knows who the group of people was. Tisha said she got a message. She called me this morning and said she had to leave from this woman who... Let's see from this woman who said she almost hit this group of kids and believed to be one of them was Gannon last. Oh, gosh, that I did something there, um, it, which was 12 miles from the go gas, which he was never at or the come and go. Um, we were having the conversation and I'm going to kind of when we talk about this and Brandon kind of correct me if I'm wrong, if I need to go there. Um, but first of all, my kids are never separated ever. Um, so we'll stop there for a minute just to say Letitia was blowing Landon up with all kinds of different possibilities of what was actually going on. I mean, he was almost hit by this car. He was with a group of kids. He was spotted on surveillance. Um, bizarre. You know what I mean? That just I, no wonder she had a re like red flags from the beginning because Letitia was acting ridiculous. Um, so go ahead. Yeah. And, and not. Not only was Letitia acting ridiculous, I mean, look, let's be honest, Letitia was acting like Letitia, but um, she was, but according to Landon and Al, actually, she was at more extra than normal. She had a, an elevated extra level. Yeah. Her you know extra what? level was elevated. That's what I'm trying to say. You know what this makes me think of? So um, I took kind of a short road trip yesterday and did some mother son time stuff. And uh, so I ended up being in the car about a total of seven hours and, and it was a good break for me because I've been, you know, all computer all the time and I'm going cross-eyed, you know, just dealing with the document and um, you know, working on the book and, you know, sometimes you just need a, a break. And um, so it was good, but I, I couldn't not, you know, be working on the case, you know, when I'm on a road trip. So what I did is I downloaded uh, my recording of Dorothy Lewis's testimony. And I haven't listened to that since I think the last time I re-listened to her testimony was like the end of May. You know, so it's been a few months and I was listening to that and I'm listening to Dave Young just drive home with Dorothy Lewis the things that happened before, during, and after Gannon's death. And he was really trying to nail her down and get her to admit that all of these things that Letitia did, whether it was um, throwing the police off or renting the car or returning the car or going on Facebook or, you know, using Gannon's phone to, you know, to distract Landon. Um, you know, I mean, uh, she did so many things calling herself into work with the, the BS excuse about the death in the family, calling Gannon into work. I mean, he's just trying to show that everything, you know, it may not have been like planned on, you know, on a, on, on a schedule with like, this is what I'm going to do. And then this is what I'm going to do. But she, she was coherent enough. I mean, she was, she, she had the cognitive abilities enough to, to run this person that way and this person that way. And, and that's what this makes me think of. That's what she was doing with Landon, you know, specifically using, because Gannon or uh, Landon mentions in this interview that 
Um, she got a call from an, an unknown number, which means that Letitia blocked the number because mm -hmm. Letitia didn't want Landon to have her number. You know, they weren't, if they communicated, it was through uh, Gannon's phone. Yeah. Um, or, you know, Letitia was contacting her using Gannon's phone. And and it's all, you know, just part of this game that Letitia was absolutely in control of. And, and all of these things that happened and all of the different directions that she sent people. Um, yeah. Oh my God. You know, that's, that's what it makes me think of. And, and Landon knew it. Landon knew she was being played and she just wanted to get to it. That's why she came there immediately, even though she couldn't afford it. Yeah. And she even says in this, you know, uh, she didn't say anything to like only to her family at first, cause she wanted to be able to go there and, you know, stay there. And she knew if she started that they wouldn't let her. And let me just say for a second, Lillian says, is there a point to overanalyzing how the parents of a murdered child reacted or grieved? Well, Lillian, I just want to let you know, first of all, we are not analyzing Landon's behavior at all. The point of this is to talk about some of the things that Landon brings forth that were happening in the home that we did not know about before. Some of the things that Letitia was telling her and things like that. It has nothing to do with Landon's behavior. There's a lot of uh, other things that are going to come out in this that are not, yeah, that are about Letitia's behavior. Right. right. L Lillian just needs to be heard tonight, apparently. I, I've never drug Albert through the mud. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. Well, I, I mean, I've, I, I've commented on things that I had every right to comment on, but I've never drug anyone through the mud. No. Well, I was just going to say, and for my part earlier when I was explaining stuff, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Allie, um, about um, about Landon is that I, I thought that in the very beginning of this, I thought that Landon was unfairly criticized. Yeah. I thought that um, and, you know, I, I've always thought that, but it's nice um, when you're talking about a case. It's nice when you can say, I've, I, I believe this. Right. But then you have something to some piece of evidence that reiterates or um, solidifies, validates what you were originally thinking. I, I always have thought that Landon was unfair, fairly criticized in the very beginning of this case. And when I heard her speak in this um, interview, I was very moved by the things that she said by and but mostly by the way that she carried herself yeah. um i just really thought that she under the circumstances being so scared i mean it's it's one thing when your child goes missing and you're in the same state but she was almost the entire you know country away i mean that you know they lived basically on opposite sides of the country and i can't imagine the panic that she was going through getting from where she lived over to Colorado. Like that's a lot. I know I was freaking yeah. out and it was a 25 minute ambulance ride. I was yeah. in the ambulance. So like we were sirens and everything, you know, but I, that's, I just, yeah. Yes. Um, and thank you, Carol freaking Claus for gifting five memberships. Thank you. And welcome you guys. Um, yeah, you guys will understand once we get through some more, this is more about what was happening in their home. Things about Letitia, absolutely nothing about Landon. I adore Landon. I've talked to Landon privately before. I think she's, you know, doing the best that she can in a really sit shitty situation. And yeah, I don't, I'm not going to let it go any further than that, but okay. So let me just go ahead and go through this part here. Cause I want to talk to you guys about this. Cause this is where her first red flag comes up. So she says, um, okay, first of all, my kids are never separated ever. And detective Bethel says your daughter. And she says, yeah, daughter and Gannon never when one goes, the other goes always like, I don't know if you've ever seen their mannerisms or you can ask their school. Lena is a little puppy dog behind her brother. Detective Bethel says, okay, and Landon says, she follows him no matter what. First red flag, I found out at 11 o'clock that all this was happening. Second red flag, Tisha was telling me um, Gannon crapped in his pants. My son takes Vivance and he um, has anxiety really bad. We've noticed and he's gone to counseling for it. He has a stomach problem and he has accidents and he's done it since his birth. And he will cut it out. 
he and he cut it out four years ago. Here and there, we've noticed he'll do it when he's coming to our house. We'll have to give him Miralax and it will just clean him out. It was a big deal because we couldn't go anywhere with it. So I hadn't heard anything about Gannon pooping. He just came back from me and left on the 7th and flew back here. So she says, and we've talked about this before, the accidents were not actually happening all that often anymore. You, you know, it had been a few. He cut it out four years ago. Remember, we talked about that. Like, I'm sure it probably still happened when he was very nervous and Letitia probably made him feel that way. But the kid had horrible anxiety. I didn't realize how bad till we got to see this, you know? Yes, I agree. The um, her her that's what I was saying about, like, this was a, an interesting interview because it gave a lot of insight into Gannon. Like we even during the trial, we watched Letitia's interview, which goes to my point about the whole system is that a trial is focused around the perpetrator, obviously, because they have to prove the state has to prove their case. So but when you when we listen to Leticia um, in her interrogation video, it was nothing really about there was very little mention about Gannon as a kid, who he was as a person. Very little. It was all me, 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 I, 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 yep. right? Absolutely. And I wanted to, you know, I thought that this gave insight. And it, again, also directly, which let's be honest, ain't nobody surprised that Letitia lied. But it is, again, it directly contradicts something that Letitia said. And the thing is, is I thought, you know, I, I, I don't know. Keep, let's just keep going. I don't rem remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Okay. It's probably not important. Just keep it respectful, chat to anyone on my panel, regardless of how you feel. These are my friends. I love them dearly. Even if I didn't, if it was a guest who I didn't care for it, please just keep it respectful to the to the panel. But OK, so then should, they're talking about him leaving Landon on the 7th. Um, and, you know, she was supposed to pick them up as an unaccompanied minor. It's been very, I haven't talked to her in about a year. She called me unknown and she called me off Gannon's phone. Haven't talked to her in a year. Detective Bethel, when did she call you on Gannon's phone? She called me at, got to find it first, but first one was unknown. And then Gannon, unknown the first time, 10.03. That was 10.03 a.m. She says no p.m. Last night, yep. And then Gannon off of his phone at 1024. More unknowns, which is her. Did you actually speak to her? Uh-huh, I spoke to her. And I haven't spoke to her in a year. Why haven't you guys spoken? Because um, her and Albert, I don't know if they've been going through things, but it's been kind of when me and Albert had to drop a lot of money in the divorce thing and I had the kids up until my daughter was in the hospital for seven months. So it made sense for me to say, hey, Albert, Gannon, she messes up. And then she says, I mean, Albert, come pick up the kids. We've been fighting for him to have for him to have the school year and me to have summers. I, I typed that wrong. This is the first year this happened. She says, OK, so here's the first accusation. Landon's acting like she wants to get something out at this moment. And she says um, there was a situation that happened with my daughter. And, you know, Bethel's like, are we talking about Landon says, you know, Harley's not mine. That's Tisha's daughter. We're talking about Lena. And she says, yeah, Nova, I've got Nova with Mike. She's 18 months. Um, Lena came down. Both of them did. Lena came down first this summer and Gannon came back a little bit later because they were going to Hawaii to celebrate and all this. So Lana came first to see and she pulled me aside and said, Mommy, Tisha was mean to me. She took my head, put it under my pillow, woke me up, put it under my pillow, rubbed it in her carpet. She had these. So it's it's she's very like all over the place with this. But she she says this a couple of times. She had these bruise marks on her lips. My daughter has very sensitive lips. They break out bad, really bad since she's been born. They break out. And um, so she came out of the blue and told me that I didn't question her. I can't come to Albert Albert because out of fear, I'll go back to court. And the cop's like, what, and lose your kids? And she's like, no, I won't lose my kids. But he makes good money. And I've been down this road with him for quite some time. And she says, well, how long has this custody lasted? Um, 
December. Let's pause there. There's more about this incident. But when I heard this, this is what made me want to type up the transcript because we have had so many talks, us three on these panels with all you guys in the chat about what kind of what was happening in the home, you know, the accusations of abuse, things like that. So she straight up says that Lena told her she woke up with Letitia holding a pillow over her face to the point where she, her lips were bruised. Right. I not believe that. that just this was, this was for me, my jaw hit the floor. Me too. Um, because it was such a, it was something I wasn't ready for. I just, I, I, I just wasn't ready. I'm still shook. It's still hard for me to even like really talk about it in any type of uh, intelligent manner. As you can tell, I'm usually not at a loss for words, but this um, incident hearing uh, La uh, Landon talk about it, um, it made a lot of things click for me. Um, yeah. I a hundred percent believe it. I, um, I do believe Lena told her that. And I do believe that Lena is telling the truth about something that happened. I do. I do think that Lena was telling the truth and I empathize with Landon in that moment being between a rock and a hard place. You have your child coming to you and saying this, these kinds of things to you that this is, this is more than just, um, uh, Leticia won't let me have my favorite, uh, snack pack pudding. Like this is serious. I know. And not know. knowing and feeling like you, you know, you need to do something, but you're just not sure what, because it's never ended well for you before, you know? And this did not go unknown to Al. We'll get into that for a minute. But like Jen said, she she felt like she couldn't tell him because when she does, then she's the bad guy. But let me just take a second and say thank you, Lynette. She, she says thanks, chicks. And thank you. I see Navy and Claws gifted said so many gifted memberships. Thank you, guys. You guys are so sweet and just too good to me. Thank you so much. Um, what do you think? Curious, Jen. I'm curious, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> it cracks me up. Um, so I, I was just trying to look at the screen here and find, because I know that she connects it somehow to the Hawaii vacation that, um, you know, Albert and Letitia took and, and didn't Lena go to visit Landon early, but Gannon went yeah. with them on a vacation. Yeah. Yes. That's what she said. Yep. Yeah. And it seemed like that was a punishment because, Lena had the nerve to accuse Letitia of something. And, um, and yeah, that just goes back to every other example of manipulation from Letitia, whether that's sexual harassment, uh, the sexual harassment lawsuit against Horry County, or the sexual harassment claims in Alaska, or the claims of discrimination um, at the other school in South Carolina when she lost her license because she basically abandoned her post for lack of a better way to put it, you know? Um, but she's always a victim of someone. And if you accuse her of something, that's why you get in trouble. And so when we started listening to those phone calls, you know, um, you know, I really wondered like, why doesn't anyone confront her when it's so obvious that she's lying? And, and I think this is why. Uh, yeah, you you don't confront Letitia even when it's just so obviously a ridiculous lie. You don't confront her because that causes a whole new level of stuff. And um, and I you know so so it's not bad enough that Letitia did what she did to to Lena, which I believe to be true. Um, I do too. I really well, yeah, do. because as that comment that you highlighted just a second ago. Um, there was a different accusation made by an, um, a neighbor where um, Lena didn't put away the laundry and Leticia uh, smacked her uh, face into the, the door jam or whatever, the f door frame and yeah. gave her um, a fat lip. So, you know. Mm. Right. Right. But you don't, you know, Letitia accuses people of causing her harm left and right. Um, but if anyone accuses her of anything, she's, she's going to get you. And, and, and that goes back to 
you know, the old boyfriend that came forward from 2010. His name was Ken. Ken from 2010. Uh, <laughs> Ken from 2010. You know, she came up from behind him, jumped on his back, tried to choke him out, bit him. And then they hadn't spoken for three months. And he's just arrested out of the blue one day. And it's because she had told a police officer that he assaulted her earlier that day. He hadn't seen her for three months, but she was still mad that he called the police on her. Oh that he reported God. her for attacking him, you know? Yeah. Um, you she, just, oh. you know. So it just makes you wonder what what these kids went through when they told her, told on her for being mean to him because they did a few times. And thank you, Donna. Uh, I was saying thank you and I didn't know I was muted. I was like, thank you, Donna says we're the best. Love this chat. And then, um, hey, Nicole Morgan and hey, everyone coming in. Um, thank you guys for being here. Hey, anonymous. Oh, and MK, MK uh, uh, donated or donated. Uh, yeah, donate gifted. I can't talk today. I'm gifted memberships. Good. Thank you, MK. And thank you, Jen, because I'm having a hard time following chat and following this. Um, you're doing the you're doing a lot, babe. You're you're you are doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. OK, so listen to what happens when what happens with this. So um, she says, <clears throat> You know, they talk about the custody and Detective Bethel says, so you guys have finally come to this agreement. She says, yeah, it's been great. Me and him haven't had any problems since they've been there. And Detective Bethel says they've only been there a year. Is that correct? Mm -hmm, that's correct. So since 2019, you guys have had a good relationship. Everything's been good. She said cordial. Anything that I wanted, I could ask. Then there's an inaudible part. And she says, so I called Albert. I waited two or three days when I wasn't at my mom's because I knew if I called Albert, oh, you're crazy. No. So I called Albert. I, I was told I needed to call his wife and apologize to her for telling him that she's not a kid beater. I've never seen Letitia put her hands on my kids. For the most part that I've known, she's been great. But these last two years, something's been up. So she was told to apologize to Letitia. How dare you accuse her of this? When you're, I, that makes me angry. I, I just don't, ah, frustrating. <clears throat> right, because it's not bad enough to commit the abuse. If you get called on it, you double down on the abuse. Yeah. And then you make the really? mother of the victim apologize to you, the perpetrator. Yeah, yeah. that's Letitia logic right there. That's it. Like yeah. I, it's infuriating to me. I, you know, I do have an older son. Um, my oldest son is not biologically my husband's, but he's raised him. In fact, I found out I was pregnant when we got together. So it, 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 I was 18. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's just a wild and crazy time for a bendy Lou. But um, I didn't have his biological father did not have girlfriends or any type of partners. So I never had I and I God I feel so lucky now because um, I don't know how I would how I would have dealt with it, to be honest. I mean, co co-parenting is is difficult enough. Then you add um, significant others to the mix and then you add that one of the significant others is fucking Letitia and all of her and her brand of ridiculous, abusive, dramatic. I mean, she's just everything. She's literally like one of the worst people to on the planet currently. And I can't even imagine what that would be like. I really can't to be, to have to, I can't imagine being Landon and having oh. to deal with the likes of Letitia. Yeah, because you can't help who he marries. That's not you can't do nothing about it. That's mm. just completely out of your control. I couldn't imagine that either. Thank you again, Claus, and welcome, Katrina. Thank you for joining. Um, right, and it's just, I mean, it's it, it, it it's a pattern that <clears throat> I mean it, it, the, it permeates throughout her entire life. I mean, look at look at the way that she went into the El Paso County Jail. You know, after extradition, before she even got to the jail. She knew that she was going to sue them. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, she be, before she was even arrested, she was talking about things that she wanted to present to the jury. Um, I mean, she. It's just. It's always this. Um, you know, offensive. Uh, 
it's it's just crazy. I mean, and so she she goes into the jail uh, and tries to bait people into breaking the rules or not following protocol because she knows the protocol and she's going to make sure that you're doing your job right. Now, there's not supposed to be any focus on what she's doing wrong, and she'll leave that part out of the story, right? But but she's going to document every piece of everything that you did wrong in your job as a CO. And, and she knew it long before you had even a name or a face. It was yet another opportunity for her to be the victim. And, um, and so it's not just the people in her immediate family. It's not just people she had relationships with. I mean, it's the people that she sought out on Facebook, you know, and, and, you know, she's having phone calls with strangers and, um, you know, trying to build this this group of people who are going to support her like she's running for political office. No, you're not running for political office. You're trying to get away with murder, you psycho. Of, a, of an 11 year old child who. Right. Yeah. The, she's the kind of person who, oh, sorry, didn't that like fall in no Walmart pain. and sue him? You know what I yes. mean? Yes. Yes. <laughs> she's the type of person that looks around, sees the sign that there's a wet floor and intentionally falls. So that she can sue. Right. Yes, exactly. Right. Well, while accidentally recording. Right. <laughs> yeah. And Leticia just for... sucks. The end. She's just terrible. Yeah. You just, you just wrote my whole damn book. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Claus. And B Crumbs have been here four months, and Claus have been here seven months. Oh my God. It's crazy. Time flies. Wow. I, I, thank you guys, though, for being here with me. Thank you. Um, Okay, so let me go on to the next part because, um, okay, so this is kind of interesting. She's, this pissed me off, actually. So Detective Bethel, you know, at the end of that statement about, you know, telling Albert having to apologize, she says, the last two years, something's been up. Detective Bethel says, what do you think? What makes you, and Landon says, I don't know. Anytime that I call and I ask, I can't see my kids on the phone. I don't talk to my kids every night. Granted, it's in our, my paperwork that I'm supposed to have conversation with her FaceTime every single night. My kid has been grounded from his phone and he can't call me. I've gone three or four nights without talking to my kids. She, Detective Bethel says to Gannon, Landon says any of them, Gannon and Lena. I normally call Gannon's phone because he's the one that's more accessible with the phone. And up until a few months ago, I hadn't been able to get in contact with Lena. She's just got the iPad. I've always been able to contact Gannon or if not, call Albert. I haven't been able to get in contact with Tisha. Um, I know that his mama came into town on Landon's birthday. She was watching Lena. I didn't know she had left and gone back. I didn't know. We're going to pause there. Why? When you're I'm sorry. Don't you can ground the kids from their phone, but you can't ground them from calling their mama. That is ridiculous to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought this this was an interesting piece of information that Landon told because the theme, the overall theme to when things changed was when they moved to Colorado. And in Albert's interviews, he said the same thing. Colorado, Colorado was not a good time for anybody in the household or, asso or associated with anybody in the household. So like it was tumultuous for and difficult for Landon to be able to communicate with her children on any type of regular basis. And there was uh, something, trouble was brewing between Leticia and Albert as well. Things, at, things between Albert and Leticia were not right after um, Alaska. And that's just facts. Albert okay. says it, you know, it just, it, it, I, he was pretty much done with her after Alaska. And I think he, I don't think he says that verbatim, but I think he says something real close to that See, I in his know interview. That. I didn't watch his as closely yet. So that's really interesting. They both say that things kind of shifted after that. And um, thank you, Glowbug, for being here four months. Thank you so much, Katrina, for gifting. And then LJC Sunflower joined. Welcome. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Well, like Albert definitely knew that he was being manipulated. You know, like when, when she asked him, when Bethel asked him for examples of manipulation and he talked about uh, Alaska he was real clear that she reported it to him knowing 
that he is a mandatory report and that he would defend her because she's his wife. You know, she, he knew it was it was a game, you know, and, and there are so many examples of, of how she manipulated him. I mean, there, there were just so many. And, you know, talking about her her jobs and the way she left each job and how it was always somebody else's fault. And um, now don't get me wrong. I'm not saying like he knew she was capable of murder. I don't believe that for a second. I I don't believe that he thought she would. I don't believe anybody thought, she, you know, I, I believe everyone knew she was a pain in the ass, that she was manipulative, that she was a liar, um, that she was a whole mess. But, you know, you just I, I don't think. I don't no, think I agree. anybody actually knew that she was capable of murder. It, it yeah. see, no, I don't think they knew that she was capable of murder either. I will 100% agree with that. It seems to me, um, from the be for in the very early days of Gannon being missing or Gannon being gone, because he, we have to remember where their state of mind was. At that, we know how the story ends. So we're looking back on it with hindsight. But in that moment to them, Gannon was missing. And um, Landon brings up something, and I, I know I'm sure Allie got to it and we'll get to it in a minute, but she talks about, um, I think that both Al and Landon thought that Leticia, whatever she did, she she dropped like she like she dropped Gannon off somewhere, and this was like some weird ass Leticia way of getting attention. This is one of her attention getting situations. I think that that's what they thought in the beginning. Well, that's how it came across to me anyway. Er, I was muted, Jen. I'm sorry. Damn it. <laughs> I was, there was like this uncomfortable, awkward silence, and I was really struggling with it, you guys. I'm so sorry, and then I'm muted. <laughs> and then when you didn't respond, I was like, oh, and I looked. I'm sorry. And uh, thank you again, Sexy Wild Thing Claw. I'm sorry, Jen. <laughs> You're both yeah, blocked. Thank you so much. You, are, you guys are sweet. <laughs> I knew she was muted. Double blocked. But they left me hanging, guys. So when I when I go live later and talk mad crap and block them, you'll be you all be Team Jen Lou because this they just left me hanging up here like a <laughs> damn chump. <laughs> well, here's the next part that annoys me over what was going on in that house. And no, I agree. I don't think they would ever expect that she would do this to Gannon. But mm -mm. I still am annoyed that she was in that she was watching him because she wasn't doing a good job. And I think Al knew that. And I'm not being critical of him because at the time you never expect something like this will happen, right? But right. I just, but this part here, okay. So Landon talks about his mom leaving, and then she says. Um, Gannon and Lena have been left alone ever since they've been in Alaska. I couldn't do anything about that because there's a rule. There's a law. I called. And they said at the time he was 10 and at the age of eight, it's up to the parent. If they think he's a good enough kid to do that. But me as a mom, I've prepped them for a fire. And then it gets a little inaudible. She talks about a hot doorknob. And then she gives her theory. So, or she starts to get into what she thinks happened. So she says, so right now, do I feel like my son walked out of that house? and told somebody he was going to go and didn't go. No, he's never done that. Do I think that my daughter, Lena, would not be with Gannon? No. What I think happened, because, see, they went supposedly hiking the day before. What I think happened is my son got grounded. Him and Leticia got into it. He stayed out of school, and now we don't know what's happened. It's been in my mind all day. I went to my cousin. I went to my mom. I'm like, don't say nothing because we got to have a place to go. And don't want to open up that can of worms till it needs to be opened. My son has, he ever since I've known him, he knows where to go. He's very good with directions. Um, he knows home. When we were there, I took him to school. I came down in November, October. Well, October and beginning in November, I took him to school and he he knew everywhere. Mommy, you got to turn here like he's just always been that great with navigation. And then her brother says he sees something once and he knows it. Landon says he just knows. And her brother says he remembers numbers from nine years ago, a hotel, a hotel number from nine years ago. OK, so I mean, hold on, I'm going to. I appreciate that about Gannon. These are the details I'm talking about, you guys, that um, 
give insight into who Gannon is. I can re- I can remember numbers. I can remember my parents' line when I lived at their house, and I can remember my line. And I haven't lived at home. I'm 46 now. I left at 17. Y'all do the math. Five ever ago, 11 billion years, yeah. and I still remember those numbers. Well, I agree with you. I appreciate knowing the little things about him, and and we'll hear some more in a in a yes. minute. Yes. It's sad, though, you know, it just it's so I don't know. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. OK, so then she says, so in my head, I messed up because this is not my son. My son doesn't go anywhere. He doesn't tell people he's going somewhere and doesn't come. Well, yesterday, he's normally in the home about five, five. laying us right behind him. He's come in the house. She said, well, it was fleeting. She got Lena in the, she got Lena in. She told me they went to all the neighborhood houses this morning. She called me and she's like, Oh, I got another lead. Gannon was seen by another lady in a bad area in town, supposedly with a group of people. Um, it's definitely Gannon. I said, well, what do the people look like? Did the lady tell you, were they old? Were they white? Were they black? Were they big kids, little kids? What kind of in a car correction and she says oh they were going left i gotta ask her i don't know if there was kids with her or not then she messaged me and said they almost hit one kid if i was a mom like last night well i am a mom she gets to see my kids more than me so she's she's getting emotional through this that's why it's kind of all over the place but she's like um but every time i talk with her Albert's losing, get, losing up. I think she meant to say giving up there, but she says losing up or losing faith. This is what's happened. I feel like somebody's got him. There was a black car that they drove by and they saw on ring doorbell. That's something else that she's told her. And I've only seen one picture that looks like my son. And I know the other one is my daughter. I can't tell if that's Gannon. Gannon, Gannon and Lena's not together. And then she says, I don't know why she told me she had a cut up carpet. And Detective Bethel's like, Wait, she told you she had a cut up carpet? Yeah, she had a cut up carpet. You can even call my sister. We were sitting there on the couch and she was like, I guess I told Albert that um, I told Gannon, I'm not going to tell his daddy that he pooped his pants and it's all over the floor. I'm not going to tell him because he's going to get in enough trouble and then he's not going to want to come home. So I just cut up the carpet and me and Harley's in here cleaning it up. I'm like, okay. Detective Bethel says, her and Harley were cleaning up where Gannon pooped on carpet. And then Landon says, yes. And then Detective Bell, they cut up. Landon, yeah. They said they had to cut it up. And I'm like, what? I asked my sister and she said, is she too good to touch poop? And I'm like, I don't know, Jessica. I have no clue. No, they have two dogs. Wait, no. Detective Bethel says, have they ever cut anything up or thrown anything away? No, they have two dogs they just got for Christmas. Two puppies that I'm pretty sure is not potty trained because my kids have told me they poop behind the couch. But relating to Gannon's incontinence. Okay, we'll get into that in a second. So right here is why my title says Harley's under the bus. Because if you see here, Letitia made sure to insert, insert that Harley was helping her clean the carpet. You know what I mean? And Detective Bethel was mm-hmm. taking this in the interview. Which annoys me because Letitia always does that. But it's just more of kind of what she was telling Landon behind the scenes. Also um, about the carpet, you know. The, they have dogs who shit on the carpet all the time. So Gannon pooped on the carpet and you cut it up. I saw a candle and all that stuff. She told Landon something totally different. Yes. And, and see, this is where now this is the 28th. Correct me. Yes. They called the, okay. The, the, um, but he was reported missing the 27th. So this is the next day. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, see, Letitia, you know, she, I, I've, I've just got, I've been studying this stuff for, you know, more than three years now. And, and you watch her shift the story. And I've gotten to a point where I can almost, I can almost tell why she's shifting the story just because I've seen that, that same pattern so many times. And so it's because she's talking to Landon and she can't tell Landon that, Gannon was doing something he wasn't supposed to. And, you know, he was playing the video games when he wasn't supposed to, and he knocked over the candle and he started a fire. Uh, she, Letitia's very careful to, to, to switch the story 
so that Ganon, because he couldn't control his bowel movements, had the accident that went on the carpet. And that's why she had to cut it out because she's just trying to help. And then she has to throw in all of this seasoning, right? Where the reason why her and Harley are cutting up the carpet and fixing it is because they're afraid of Albert, you know? So it's, it's because she's talking to Landon that she has to make Albert the bad guy because when she's talking to Landon, Yes, it's, it's, it's okay to make Albert the bad guy, but no matter what Letitia is helping and, and, but, but if she's talking to someone other than Landon, it's Gannon started the fire. Gannon caused the fire. Yes. Gannon's doing that. You know, um, she changes the villain and I don't like to use this, because, but that's the only way I know how to describe it. She changes the villain in the story, depending on who she's talking to. Right. So that, you know, and she does that all the time. Oh my God. All the time. All the time. Now to, to Albert, she, this is what's so weird about the whole thing is she's telling Landon, she's afraid of Albert, right. Or his reaction, right. Does she's trying to spare Gannon from getting into trouble, but then at the same, but on the, on, out of the other side of her face, the night of the 27th, she texts Albert repeatedly about this candle situation. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and it's like Letitia. Yeah. It's like she never thinks that people are going to get together and speak. And yeah. I, I have to say, I think that in uh, for a while while they were in Colorado, I think she did do a good job of getting in between and manipulating the situation in such a way so that late uh, landed would not go to Al when the kids told him something. Right. And, and so here Landon is the only one who's gotten the story about the poop on the carpet. Right. So right. Now if, if Landon speaks up and talks about the poop on the carpet, it's easily dismissed by Letitia saying she got it wrong. She doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Even though Letitia set her okay. up to be the only one with that different story. You see Bingo. Yeah, right. makes, bingo oh my god she's so fucking wicked she's she just, devious oh. so the next part i don't really want to go through because i don't want to do that to gannon it's just basically about his stomach problems he is very right. embarrassed of it and um yeah he does she landon said he wouldn't get it on the floor when this happens he stands a certain way it's a certain thing and he's very embarrassed so we'll skip that but it leads into more about this event with Lena. So she says, you know, Gannon is a very tidy, clean person. And Detective Bethel says, so during these conversations she's had with you, she told you that she had to cut out the carpet. Her and Harley cut out the carpet. Hold on. Let me get my screen. Okay. And um, Landon says, because they didn't want Albert to get mad. And Detective Bethel says, I've never, no, where in the house or where in the, and Landon says, I've never been in their house. This is the first time I've seen their house. They wouldn't give me their address until I had to ship something to my daughter. Detective Bethel, when was that? Landon, that was during soccer season. I shipped her some soccer gear for her to play. Detective Bethel, so within this last year, Landon, yeah, it's always been this way, has it not? I've had to fight for their address. I've had to find some way to get involved. And I don't know why. I've never physically seen any harm to my kids. The only thing that got me is that whole Lena thing. And I still hadn't been able to shake that, where she was woke up and supposedly her face was suffocated in the thing until it messed up her lips. But then, do I believe, and then Detective Bethel says, where, where did this happen? Landon, here. Detective Bethel, did she tell anybody other than you? Landon, she came. She was bawling, tears. She said she couldn't tell her daddy. I held it in for three days. I told my mama, and I finally called and told Albert. He fussed at me and told me I needed to call her and apologize to her. Detective Bethel, does Albert leave the kids alone with her? 
Um, she didn't even finish it. And Letitia said, or Landon says, all the time, Detective Bethel, because like she was kind of interrupting her. That's why my notes look like this, because it was back and forth. But then she says, all the time, and sometimes not even with Tisha. Tisha, from my understanding, what I've talked to my kids, just to get questions on what's going on, it's that they get out of school, they go to the house. Tisha works, coaches ball. Sometimes she's not there till five or six. Sometimes it's even later. They're fixing their food in the microwave. Albert works night shift. I know that his mom has been over. Miss Debbie's been over there a few times to watch them. Half the time, it's just been my son watching Lena. That just. Right. Oh. That was the one that got me too. Yeah. It's like, oh. Trenton is 14, you guys. And if I left him alone, like even to run, I don't, we don't do it. But if I had to, like say I left him alone and ran to the post office real quick, I would be a nervous wreck the entire time. And he's 14. Like he's probably big enough for that. But still, what if emergency happens or I don't know. I just, at, at their age, I just don't like that. But that's just me. Albert didn't like it either though, just to say, he does say that in like when he comes in with Detective Bethel for a part I saw. He talks about he was thinking of hiring a um, babysitter, but I don't know what happened with that. So. Right. Well, and and I remember Albert mentioned something. I mean, he did kind of um, stumble around it, kind of like, you know, like he probably knew it was wrong, but, or not wrong. I mean, we can't say it's wrong. I mean, I mean I'm, I've got something right in front of me that says, while there is no set age for kids to be left home alone in Colorado, State labor laws allow a child to work for pay as a babysitter at the age of 12. 12 is close to the age that many parents feel comfortable allowing their child to care for themselves for a few hours. Um, you know, so there's no set law. So we can't say that it, it, it was wrong, but right. I've yet to come across any one person who was like, of course it's fine to leave an 11 and an eight year old home alone every day after school. Yeah. You know, nobody, nobody said that to me. Um, but that, I mean, it's not, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't want to get. Yeah. I know. Uh, what you know, mean. but it's but a parenting it's, choice, right? It's a parenting choice and it's, and it's not illegal. It's um, not illegal. I just, I, I just think it's so much on little Gannon. Like he's right on. Right. He's responsible for a lot. Um, just a second though, you guys, true crime crazy has been in the ICU and she might still be. <gasps> she Probably is, and I just want to send lots of love and all the good vibes and prayers and stuff her way. Amen. Absolutely, I'm gonna send you all the good healing, Juju. True crime, crazy. Yes. Okay, so this part, the bath salts. We're about to get into the bath salts. So, Detective Bethel, Bethel says, "What about Harley? Where's Harley at?" Landon says she's in the Navy somewhere, is what I heard. Supposed to be working. Let me just pause there for a minute. She. Was that just lies? Because you hear that in some of the their other interviews too. But I mean, she's not in the Navy. I, I think I mean, that Letitia was very protective of Harley and uh, disciplining Harley, or even talking about Harley. And just like it was okay for Letitia to be taking care of Gannon and Lena, as far as you know, like the way Al described their parenting with the two younger kids, but it wasn't okay for Albert to be, you know, a certain way with Harley. And I feel like it would have been a very bad, I, I, I can't imagine that Landon and, and Letitia ever talked about Harley um, because uh, just because of the way Letitia is. So anything that, you know, Landon would have heard about Harley, I mean, it's not like, you know, I mean, when, when but Letitia said it though. Letitia told people in the she does it in the news interview. Mm -hmm. With the with the news. Yes, she says, My daughter is serving her country. Yeah, in the Air Force. Yeah. I'm, what in the, in world? the United States Air Force. I, I'm just saying that's just, you know, I mean it's just we're all we're talking about is the difference between the Air Force and the Navy. And I just feel like Landon probably would have said Navy instead of Air Force because it's not like she's sat down and had long conversations right. about what Harley's doing. Right. And I feel right. like if she tried, she would get cut off at the knee. You know what I mean? Get yes. And, and I think also there is a part in the, of the interview where um, Landon does talk about her relationship with Letitia. And there was a period of time 
when things were not good between Letitia and Al. And Letitia confided a lot in Landon. They did actually talk. So it may have been something that, heck, Lena and Gannon might have said it. Lena and Gannon might have said, um, because it's something they overheard, like maybe uh, uh, Letitia and Harley were thinking, you know, talking because they talk about plans to, for her to be in the military when Letitia is locked up uh, awaiting trial. They talk about it. Right. So right. maybe it's something that Lena and Gannon overheard and the, and like and they said um, maybe one time, you know, Landon said, like, moms do. There's nothing wrong with this. So yeah. what's Harley up to? You know, right. and and Gannon or Lena said, well, she's she's in, in the, the Navy. Navy. Mm -hmm. yeah, that sense. Something like that. OK, before we move on, I want you guys to see these two comments. So Donna says, I know this subject matter is hard, but I think you girls are doing such a great job. And then Trish says, I really appreciate the three ladies on panel because they all know this story so well. I get so frustrated with some other channels putting out tea bag content. And thank you, guys. That is really sweet. Both of those I appreciate you guys. Thank well, you. And, and just to kind of stick up for other channels, certainly not by name, but, um, oh, hold you on. know, let's, let's, let's be, no, Jen, <laughs> let's, let's be honest. This is confusing stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I take that as a great compliment, uh, you know, that, that we are getting it right now. I have over time gotten things wrong, but it's the conversations that we have in chats like these. It's the studies that we do. It's the conversations that we have. It's the times we disagree. It's the time, you know, all of that has is is what has molded our understanding of the case. Um, and that doesn't just come by watching a video here and there. I mean, we've gone over this stuff at at great length. And, um, yeah. you know, I've been wrong. I, I remember during trial or no, all the way up to trial. I was so worried that Letitia was going to be found not guilty by uh -oh. When you start telling them the details of this case, what's the matter? You cut out for cut like, out. Just, but you came right. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, oh, man. But, the but only so time Allie doesn't have a delay is when she and I need to say something together and we <laughs> say it in sync. You cut <laughs> out. <laughs> um, but, but going up to the trial, because every time I would say some, I would start explaining this case to somebody who wasn't in the true crime circles. They're just like, oh, she's crazy. That bitch is crazy. You know, something like that. And I'm like, yeah, but she's not insane. I mean, yeah, it's all crazy. I know it's all crazy, but listen, you know, and, and I really was worried that that all it takes is one person on the jury to go, oh, man, she's just crazy. Uh, maybe not fully understanding the difference between crazy and insane. Anyway, I was under the impression that if she was found not guilty by reason of insanity, she would be sent to Colorado Mental Health Institute at Pueblo and that she would have the possibility of, of being released once a year, every year until she finally died. Right. And yeah, and I, was, I was really concerned about that, but it turns out I was reading the new statute wrong um and when it's a case of this magnitude with violence uh, and criminal behavior of this magnitude it's not once a year every year the 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 windows between times that she gets to go in front of that board um were a lot further apart you know and and i was wrong about that for months and um you know i was i was corrected i looked into it i reread it i'm okay with being wrong me too uh, it because when I find even. out, like when I find out I'm wrong, it's, you know, then, then I get to be right. <laughs> you know, well, it's an it's opportunity to learn something. Right. It's hot. Like they're okay. Crazy and insane. Right. When we're just talking regular every day, having conversations, we use those words interchangeably, but in the legal system, they have very different meanings. For, like, um, just like homicide and murder have very different meanings in the legal. Homicide is a manner of death when you're talking about, you know, and that just means that you died at the hands of another. The murder is something very different. So, you know, when we talk about, and also we have to give credit where credit is due. Leticia 
tells 11 billion stories in the span of five minutes. Yes. And right. the details. And then you're, and then you're yes. the asshole if you miss a detail that she told Correct. you, even though it was probably a lie. Right. If, if you said she was, if she said she was wearing uh, white socks, but she threw so many details at you that you say, I think they were cream colored. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you, the whole story that you just re, re that you just told or, you know, That's repeated exactly. is mm -hmm. a lie because you missed that one detail. And those are the those are the types of people that are so I, I loathe dealing with people like that, where if you say um, one small detail that actually has no doesn't mean anything in the broader picture, but then all of the that you're a liar. Right. No, there's a, that's another thing. There's a difference between being a liar and misspeaking. A lie is intentional. A lie is when you know that she's wearing white socks, but you say cream. Right. Saying yeah. cream because, and you, you know, because she's thrown 11 billion other details that don't really mean anything. And she's twisted the story around 11 billion times. Exactly. Right. And you, it, you know, that's, that's a miss, you're misspoke. Those are the people right. that you have to do mental gymnastics that you are physically and mentally exhausted dealing with. And I cannot deal with it. I These can't. are the I, people I ghost. Yeah. I have a I'll very be like new phone. Who dis can't do it, but okay. Well, let me continue. Cause we do have a little bit more, mm -hmm. a, a lot more. I don't know how far we are, but um, true crime crazy. I wanted to uh, read this and tell you, please email me. She says she's still in ICU and it looks like she'll be here a while. Oh, and also no. thank you again, Claus. Sorry, Jen. Oh no. Well, let, let us know, email Allie and let us know if there's anything we can do. Yes, please do. Okay. Let me go. And then we'll talk again in a second after about some of this. So, cause we're getting to the bath salt part, but um, so she asked about Harley and Landon says, you know, she's in the Navy working. Um, I don't, I used to, when my daughter, when my daughter was in the hospital, the youngest, me and Tisha would talk because at the time I wanted to see my kids and Albert was holding the kids from me, from seeing me while I was in the hospital. And it was the only way. And she was willing, basically the only person to talk to me during that time. And then when all of this happened, she just stopped talking to everybody. Detective Bethel, when you say all of this happened, what do you mean by that? Landon, all of when my children went back to here, I don't talk to her anymore. Detective Bethel. So when they moved to Colorado, the relationship between you and her ended? Landon. Yep. Detective Bethel. Um, has Gannon talked to you about his friends? So now we're getting into the bath salts. Well, uh, just, I just put that there because I was trying to, like, if I needed to quickly see it. But um, so Landon says, yeah, um, Gannon, I've met two of the friends off of phone calls when I've talked to him. Um, I don't really know all of their names. They were telling me some guy named Jimmy with an older kid. I don't know if this was planted or what, but Gannon did state that he needed to get bath salt. And I don't know who sent it, who texted it. Gannon's been grounded from his phone. I don't get many messages from my son because he's grounded from his phone. Detective Bethel, when did he start being grounded from his phone? Since he's moved here. Detective Bethel, so you've had limited communication with him since they've moved to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Landon says, I've got to call his grandma. Um, they call me in the morning off of their phone before they leave for school. And when Albert has them, he'll call right before their school or when he's getting them. I've rarely seen, I've seen Tisha there a couple of times. I don't, I don't know what she's doing. I've been told not to ask by him and her. So I don't, I don't ask. Detective Bethel, when he asked, when, when did he ask about the bath salts? Landon, oh, so then Landon's brother steps in and he's like, did he text Albert that or did he call him? Landon, he texted Albert. I've got it here. He says, dad, do we have bath salt? And um, he said, no, I just found out about this through her. She sent the text message to me. Detective Bethel, so you have the actual text message screen. Landon, yeah, I've got the screenshot in text messages. <clears throat> does the language that your son's using in this text screen, does it sound like how your son would talk? 
Well, on this one, this has been since he's missing. When I've been on the phone with Gannon, yes, it's been Gannon. This is Tisha. I'm aware. Does it? So I don't know. She confused me with this part because then her brother's like, does it sound the same from when he was talking to Albert the same way he usually talks? So that was Gannon texting because Landon's like, yeah, to me. So I don't know there, but I, I don't believe that was Gannon at all. I, I am annoyed over the bat. Like the Tisha, that's just another way that she tries to smear that baby. And it's infuriating, but. Agreed. I think the bath salts text, I think that that text came from Letitia. I do not think that Gannon sent that text. 100%. I agree too. Oh, no. I mean, we we can't prove it, but right, that's what we believe. Yeah, right. In my opinion, <laughs> right. Um, so Landon says when they talk on the phone, they have to stay in public. I don't have time alone talking to them. I'm, I'm sorry, but I wouldn't have that either. That is just it feels. I feel for her so much. It's just. It's, you know, custody, this is normal, though, to truly custody battles get nasty. They get gruesome. Which sometimes they do. Sometimes they people do great, but they can get really they're tough. You know what I mean? It's just that's just the truth of it. Um, but OK, so Detective Bethel asked Landon, what do you guys normally discuss when they call? Landon says, how's your school? What have you guys been doing? What you eat? What's your plans for the week? What did you do today? Did you brush your teeth? because their hygiene is awful. That's something I've always mm -hmm. had to remind them, brush teeth constantly. I heard that and I thought about her greasy hair. I was right. like, <laughs> their hygiene is awful. You don't say. Um, I'm shocked. Yeah. She says, I've always have to remind them both, brush teeth constantly. I tell them every single day, ask them about their school, gaming, Gannon's into games big time. So we're always talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. We always talk about Kirby. We spend probably 15 or 20 minutes talking about games and movies coming out. With me and Lena, we start talking about her unicorns and her little popsy pops, Sorry, her guys. riding that's okay. Her riding the bicycle and her sports. Um, Gannon does. Him and Tisha do get in arguments. Okay, so him and, Tisha and Gannon get into arguments. And Albert, so from what I've heard, like the conversation with Albert and the kids is that it's more you got to do your chores. If not, you're in timeout. Gannon has came to me and told me, listen to this, told me that he's been called a brat. He's been called stupid. He's been called a bad kid. <laughs> oh, it's infuriating. He has so much anxiety and depression. If he feels like he's hurting you, he's going to cry and he's not going to go to sleep. He wants to make sure he's fixed that problem before. He he didn't understand why I was in the hospital with my baby. He thought I was going to die because I was in the hospital. He had to call me every single night and talk to me. So I don't, it ain't making sense to me. Detective Bethel, this, so this isn't like Gannon. She says, no. But he's been called stupid, a brat, and what was the other one? Um, a bad kid. Uh, a bad kid. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, okay, it's, so. It just breaks your heart to yeah, hear him, yeah. you know, to hear children being spoken to like that. I know. It does. Because he's such a – and then you think about his little video, like – on his YouTube channel. He's such a precious baby, his sweet little voice. I don't know how you could say that to him. I just don't understand. I understand getting annoyed with kids that aren't listening, right? Or or mm -hmm. something like that. But calling them stupid and no. Uh -uh. And that kind exactly. of stuff about kids, no. Exactly. Right. I was so frustrated when Letitia was trying to, you know, pitch this narrative where she was actually closer with Gannon than she was with Lena. Um, it was ridiculous, and and I think it was in trial where it came out. Um, in in I think it was with Kevin Clark's testimony the second or third time. Um, and in looking through her phone, there were thousands of photos in her phone, and and out of all of the pictures of the kids, you know, with the kids being Harley, Lena, and Gannon, there were pictures of just Harley. There were pictures of just Lena. The only picture of just Gannon in more than a thousand photographs were the two where he was in his bed the morning that she killed him or, you know, the morning of the day she killed him. 
Um, that's the only time she just took to like, she took a picture of Gannon to take a picture of Gannon. And even then, you know, well, it served a purpose, you know, obviously she wanted to prove that he was still alive at that point because I believe, you know, she had it planned, which is another reason why, you know, I believe that she sent the bath salts text and, you know, oh we, we God. know that. That is so sad. Though. Yeah. Um, but she tried to pitch that story where, um, you know, she was actually closer with Gannon because, you know, they had the stomach issues in common. They had that in common and they had the anxiety issues. And, and so they were actually really close. I mean, it just, um, it's so obvious that, that that was not the case. And then there was also the point at which uh, Albert mentioned that the reason why the real reason, according to Albert, that Gannon was in therapy was to protect him because Letitia had started telling the story of the quote unquote knife incident where Gannon allegedly came at her with a knife. And now there were no witnesses and there is zero history in 11 years of that precious little boy's life where he's ever been accused of anything remotely aggressive and certainly not violent. Um, and in talking to his classmates and his teacher and his friends and family members and a, not one example of Gannon ever being uh, aggressive or violent. You know, everybody talks about, that. you know, how much he liked, you know, the video games and being inside and uh, you know, even Brandon called him a little nerd, you know, like not in a bad way, but you right. know, um, just I, I took it as sort of like an endearing thing, not, you know, just like, yeah. That's, that's just, yeah, like you know, he just type. wanted to. He wanted to play his video games. He wasn't like wanting. He wasn't into sports and playing outside and doing all that stuff. He, right. you know, he played his video games. Yeah, I that's have it right here, but I was. I kind of skipped over it. It's oh, just sorry. Right here. No, that's okay. I was gonna. Uh, I just wasn't gonna read it because I didn't want people to like take it the wrong way. But it's right here. He says, "Yeah, he's a little nerd. He don't like to go outside." <laughs> he said, right. "Oh, this part though." He says, "I got two little boys. My oldest one, he said, idols him. So I think he means like looks up to him. And he's yeah. about to be six, and they're like best friends. And that, oh, that just hurt my heart so much. Like, right? But he's just. I mean, if." If that were true, well, first of all, we know how much Letitia lies. And and if it were true that Gannon came after her with a knife with no witnesses, um, there would be some sign that he was capable of or likely to do that or, you know, troubled enough. And, and it seemed like Albert was saying that the reason he was in counseling was to protect him from further accusations because he knew how Letitia was. And it seemed like Letitia had, had sort of set her sights on Gannon. And that's who she was. That's, that was who Letitia was going to set up as the next version of woe is me. I'm the victim. Yes. Um, he, Gannon was going to be the next villain. Right. Exactly. And what then a, yeah. she, she further does that when she's pretending to be Maria Sanchez. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, and, you know, looking, uh, looking back at it, you know, and now that we've started to see like the emails that she sent Albert on Saturday and she's, you know, trying to guilt trip him and, you know, all she wants is his attention. And then, and then we find out during his testimony at trial that she faked two burglaries and the, and she admits to faking them finally and the reason why she faked them is because she needed his attention. I mean, she's just, she's just that sick. And, and, and that's what I think actually started the fire on, on, on Sunday was because he's leaving. She didn't want him to leave. He left a day early. He's ignoring her. She can't get his attention. She's pulling every card that she's, you know, that, you know, she told him on Saturday that she was pregnant, even though she wasn't, um, you know, she's, she's pulled every, uh, manipulation tactic that she can pull and she still doesn't have his full attention. She didn't get him to stay. She didn't get him to not leave early. Um, she didn't get him to reschedule. The fake pregnancy didn't work. The two burglaries didn't work the last time. And, you know, she couldn't pull anything like that again. And, and she was already, you know, she talks about how she was isolated once she got to Colorado, 
you know, she was away from her people and she was feeling isolated. You know, who was isolated uh, were those two kids. They, they were isolated and they were alone with her a lot of the time. Yeah. And, and that's the way abusers like it, you know? And so, and again, I'm not blaming Al for going out of town. He had to go for work. He could have rescheduled. And he said himself that he would have rescheduled if he would have known that there was an imminent danger. Right. right. I, I believe he didn't know there was an imminent danger that she was going to murder his child. That's insane. Um, oh, God, I got to be careful with that word. <laughs> but but anyway, so he had left and, and that was going to be the next thing. There was going to be this fire and... Um, and by God, she was going to get his attention one way or another. And when we know about the burglaries and the pregnancies and the emails that she sent him and the way that when she was telling him about the fire and how she saved the day, you know, she's trying to drag him back into her reality and and he just won't go. And And so then it escalated and escalated and escalated. Again, that puts no... I mean, it, it, it really the blame it just, is where the blame needs to be, which is on Leticia. Right. It's just an example of how, how sick she truly is. And she is sick and she is crazy, but she's not legally insane and she should be responsible. I'm, uh, I, I know I'm going a million miles an hour That's here. Right. Um, go I have you have to go. get off of here soon because I need to go grab my son. But, um, uh, so uh, I saw a couple of people in chat ask about, you know, being in, uh, in a prison in Kansas mm -hmm. and, and what her prison life is probably like. And, and we talked about, you know, uh, the phone calls from, from prison channel on here the other night when we listened to pieces of those calls and it's frustrating. It's so frustrating to hear her being in the medical ward because she's still playing that mental health card. And that's all it is to her. It's a card in a game. And is it really that easy for somebody to play the system like that and, and get a room to herself with her TV and. Yeah. When you're manipulative you, like she is, you know, I mean, I understand that uh, she's good at it though. You know what I mean? She's been doing this her whole life. She's good at it. When a lot of people in prison are, they're, you know, full of. Right. And, and the lawsuit and everything else. I mean, does she actually, did she in Colorado actually have, you know, the, the people who were responsible for her concerned that if they didn't tiptoe around her and follow the rules that she was going to sue them as well? I mean, or do they just blow her off like an idiot like so many of us do? That See, that's why... That's, I mean, that's a big part of that chapter called the presumption of ignorance, because I look at her and, and I'm like, oh, she's an idiot. But you look at her manipulation and, and, and if we somehow judged a person, a person's actual intelligence, like if their IQ was somehow based on their ability to manipulate others, she'd be like leading her local Mensa International chapter. I mean, <laughs> oh, she'd yeah. be brilliant. If yeah. if manipulation were you know directly proportional to IQ intelligence, yeah. Okay, I got a question um, that was in the chat too, and I think that it was, but I might not be remembering correctly. They did find DNA under that wax, right? Remember, they read off the DNA results of the wax on the carpet, the carpet with the the piece of carpet that had the wax on it also had DNA on it. Or am I, wrong? I believe that it had blood on it, I but I, true. I think that I don't think that it could be tested for DNA, but I might be wrong about that. It's been a long time. Yeah. There are certain details I remember perfectly. I can recite dates. I can recite all kinds of stuff. But if, I, if I'm if i not sure, I have to look. I but the good thing is I'm so organized with all this stuff now, I know exactly where to look to find it. Yes, please do, because I'm almost certain, and I may be remembering it wrong, but my notebook for this case is not over here, so I can't yeah. even look. I know I've got it, too, somewhere. Well, I am actually going to have to run, though, um, because I've got to be somewhere in 28 minutes, and I don't want to be late. But I will look it up, and we can talk about it um, next time. For next time. Yeah, 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 and we have so much more to go over, and I'm sorry I'm dipping out early. I can't um, wait. 
to go through the rest with you guys. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't end the live stream on my account. You know, I'll still be listening in the car. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll finish this, you know. Okay. Well, I, I love you guys. And bye, chat. We love you. And thank you so love much. Love you. Too. Bye. Bye. Yes, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming. And Daisy, Daisy, thank you for being a member for five months. Bendy, you got anything before I continue? We don't have too much left. No, are... not about this part. I will say the only thing I have to say about the, the, the whole candle situation has always confounded me. And I have gone back and forth, left and right. I, I just that whole she mentioned that candle situation for a reason. I just cannot. I, I don't know. I just cannot figure out what what she was up to. I, I do s sometimes wonder if the candle situ if the candle thing started out as um, a ploy to get Albert home and then went too far and escalated and she panicked thinking that Gannon was going to tell the truth. And that's how all of this happened. Sometimes I wonder that. Sometimes I don't. It's just I, I have never been able to really wrap my brains around this dadgum candle. I agree. I want to know because we don't know. And that's the worst part. It's like what actually happened? And I, I'm kind of I fall into that same line of thought because we hear and see it other ways where she's talking about you know, that it would get him to come home. You know what I mean? We've seen it a yes. couple of times. Oh, yes. look at you, though. Christine G, it's me. Hi, beauty. Hey. Hello, Christine. Long time no see. Good to see you. Well, thank you, Carol freaking Claus. Okay. So let me go through this part, and we'll, I'll get your thoughts on this. Um, Okie dokie. So they bring up the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Detective Bethel says, now what about his Nintendo? What do you know about that Nintendo Switch that he has, that game system? Landon, you know, she she does, she, she says, I don't know anything about the game system. He was here. I know we have one at home. So he has here. I know we have one at home. Supposedly, Tisha told me that he was grounded from the Switch and he left with that. Did he leave? Is his charger still there, says Detective Bethel? Or no, no, Brandon says that. Landon says, I mm -hmm. don't know. Brandon says, I guarantee he wouldn't leave the charger. Detective Bethel. So when the kids are grounded from their things, how, I mean, you can't just ground a kid and leave it with them. Do they take it from their possession? How do they, hold on, I'm going to pull it on the screen because it's flashing. Okay, sorry. Landon says, they normally take it from them from what I hear, unless, because I'm not, I can't talk to them on it, so it's normally taken from them. Now, as far as the game system, they've been pretty strict on it. Like, if he does bad in school, you're grounded. You don't get it. And this is when you can get it. And they stay by that. This time, he's been grounded for quite some time. I don't even know what he's grounded over. I know when I called and talked to him Sunday, you know, Saturday was the last time I've talked to him. So you could kind of tell in his eyes, you know, he's sad. But he's not going to tell me that he's sad because he knows mommy's going to worry. So I got to say, like, he don't care to see me unless he sees no. I got to say, sorry, Bubba, are you okay? Smile. Um, and he says, I'm good, mommy. I want to see Nova. He loves Nova. Like he has to see Nova every single night or he can't like he don't care to see me unless he sees Nova. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm worried. Detective Bethel. So you lost touch with him Saturday and that was on his phone. Landon. Mm -hmm. Was anyone monitoring that conversation? During that time, it was the morning and he was about to get on the bus. And I think his grandma was there. And that was the last day. Detective Bethel's like on Saturday. And Landon's like, I think it was whatever day. So they get confused on the day for a second. Let me just, I'm not going to read through each part of that. Let me get to the next part. That's so sad, though, that he would look sad, Jen. Let I know. It breaks my heart. Like, what I, the takeaway that I get is that. Gannon was an incredibly sensitive little guy yeah. and worried how he made other people feel more than he worried about how him, he himself was feeling. Knowing yeah. that somebody was angry or sad or disapp mostly disappointed in him, the two, you know, angry and, and or disappointed in him seemed to really weigh on his mind. And the thing about 
it's, I can't speak for every child, but with my, I do, I do know children who are like that, or, you know, they're not children anymore. Those children seem to not be the discipline problems when they're young because they don't want to disappoint anybody or to make anybody angry. They right. don't like the way that that they feel when that happens. So I find it interesting. I, I would really like to know, and I know I'm never going to know this, but part of me wants to know what, you know, when they, there's arguments with Letitia, what that actually is, what that really means. Do you know what I mean? Like, is yeah. it, is Gannon simply asserting himself in a way where he's not agreeing with Letitia. He's saying, um, maybe, um, I don't, you know, a food or something, you know, saying that you're going to, you know, and he says, I don't like this or something. You know what I mean? Something small, but to Letitia, any, anything that is, she, she's another one. She takes shit like that really personally. You know, yeah, like I, I would agree. not take, if, 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 if a child told me I don't like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, if I made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I wouldn't take that shit personally. I would but not be offended, would. but she would. And Absolutely. it would, I think it would make her angry. I agree. I think it would too. I completely agree. And Christine G, it's me. We do have some new documents coming, but well, we just got them, but we haven't got to like organize it yet or anything. But this is the, an interview that was just released of Landon the day after Gannon went missing. And I transcribed it. I just typed it up most of it before we started. Okay. This part, Jen, this part was, sh sh oh, okay. So, um, Landon says he just wanted to see his baby sister. He didn't care about anything else. Gannon is on a schedule. Gannon does like he's very consistent and persistent. Like there's not much of a disruptive or anything disruptive to his schedule. You always know what Gannon's going to do. She says, I don't think he went to a friend's house. Detective Bethel, what do you think happened? Landon, I think Tisha knows what happened. You can't tell me. Do you have a kid? You can't tell me if you tell him to go somewhere. You're not going to call and make sure he gets there. Detective Bethel, is that what normally happens with Gannon? Yeah, and Lena's with him, Landon says. Detective Bethel, so who's the one that does the calling and checking up to make sure if they're getting there? Landon, Albert normally does. He calls and talks to him. Like, I don't know if Tisha, I haven't heard from Tisha for quite some time. Like I've heard her in the background. It's probably been like three or four times. And I know that they have some resentment with Albert being gone. And she wants to know why he's been gone all the time. And that's been a lot of their arguments. She feels like she is here and having to deal with the kids and can't do her stuff. And she has held it I've heard them on conversations with my two that there's some jealousy on that. And I mean, I try to understand both sides like I can get it, but that's their problem. That's their marriage. That's something that you guys, when I bring it to them, it's my fault. So I haven't been in a position where, I mean, I'm single with a kid where I can take them to court. I hadn't. I can't do that right yet. And then Detective Bethel says, OK, Landon says, and I know Albert won't hurt a kid. Detective Bethel, you don't think Albert would do anything. What makes you so focused on? And then she interrupts her and says, my son was one pound and six ounces. That man, and her voice breaks, and she's crying by the end of this. She says, mm -hmm. that man, every single day when my son was in that hospital, 24 to 31 weeks, he didn't miss a day, nor did I. That boy had 10% chance of survival. If he survived, he would be profoundly disabled. He made it through that. Albert has always made sure they had a way. Albert's job has taken him away a lot so he can provide. And I was selfish at the beginning as a mom wanting to see her kid every day. I don't want to say use them as a pawn, but you kind of use them at your advantage because you want to see them every day. I don't want to travel all over the world with him for him to see the kids. So, I mean, that was our big problem. But he hasn't never not I don't ever think I've ever heard him like when we were together, he hasn't spanked them. And then her brother steps in and says, he's a good daddy. And it goes on a little bit, but let's pause here for a second. Um, 
So obviously, even Landon, because we know now after everything that Letitia, like her Google searches, she was fed up with having to take yeah, care of Yeah, she was. But it's she crazy was. that Landon knew that on the day after he went missing. This is just, you know, the next day. She's, it's crazy. Like, and she barely is, talked to him. Right. But this is what I, this is, remember, we've had this conversation about how women, not all women, but generally speaking, women are very detail oriented. And so they will pick like uh, talking to my kids, I would pick on a uh, pick up on stuff that they said and conversation with my husband about it later. And he wouldn't have picked up on any of the shit that I was mentioning. Right. You know, and, and I have to say that the, it got me right in my feels when she talked about, Gannon being in the NICU, my oldest son was in the NICU. He wasn't as tiny as Gannon. He weighed two pounds, four ounces. And yes, they come in and it is when your baby is that tiny, they give you the worst case scenario. He, I mean, my son had to have two blood transfusions. Um, it yeah. was a lot. And I was young. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it is something that <clears throat> really um, bonds you. When you have, uh, your, like my husband was incredibly supportive. We were there every single day. I was there all day um, because my mom worked at the same hospital. So I would go in with her and then leave when she left. And then when my husband would get home from work, he and I would go up there. And he was incredibly supportive. And I was, I remember when we brought him home, I was scared to bathe him because he was so little. And he you know, reassured me and all the things. So when Lane, when Landon says something like that, even though it's, it sounds to me like the source of contention between Albert and Landon, as far as Gannon and Elena go is Letitia. Yeah. Well, I agree with you on all of that because it does bond you and it does, it just, yeah, on all of that, I truly do. Cause I've kind of been through it too. And I think that I don't know. Um, it is. I think I agree with you with Letitia being the problem between the two, but they still have so much love for each other. You can see that. And remember, in like the press conference, like them holding each other, they really like even though he found his new wife and all that stuff, when it counted in the moments of this baby being missing and that these press conferences and stuff, they stood there together. You know, they, what did. I mean? they came together, however, they may have been feeling two days prior about when when before two days before Gannon went missing however they were feeling about each other two days prior to this it was didn't matter because they came together and were a team from the beginning yeah they and, were. and I was. do remember listening to those pretext calls remember those where um Yes. Al was talking to Letitia about stuff that he had that Letitia had sent to Landon remember text messages oh, yeah. and stuff yeah you know and that's kind of and she's about right like those um yeah that's when she started getting pissed oh yeah because they were working together she couldn't yes. take that and then landon was in her house and she she didn't take that either yes and then remember leticia tells this story which i think is interesting because landon never mentions this and i waited to listen i was waiting for this part Remember, Letitia said that she was working with Landon to get Gannon and Lena back to her. Remember that? They were cahooting and yeah. Albert was mad at her. Yes. Remember that story? Yeah. 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 That she was helping Landon. I do remember mm -hmm. that. Oh, my God. That's because that's when I came up with their cahooting, their cahooters. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't remember that was where the cahooting came from. But that's funny. Um. Well, here she kind of puts, she kind of throws a, she, a couple digs at her. It's, she says, so um, after her brother says he's a good daddy, Landon says, I've known Tisha. Me and Tisha played ball together before I knew her, before any of this. And I don't even know how to like describe. She had nothing. I think she likes the life, which is cool. And Detective Bethel says, what kind of life does she like? Landon. Oh, she's got to have the best of everything. My kids, um, when we first started before I got pregnant with Nova and even this whole time with Nova, 
I sent money for their birthday. Gannon had a birthday in September and they went and watched the Angels, whoever was in the World Series. And I sent $200 and he didn't even get a cake. He didn't get nothing. Like he don't even know where the money went. But they just, she's always got to look the part. She's always got to have the best, which is, it's her, and I'm fine with that. But something ain't right. She told in a conversation, and I've yet to tell Albert, when I was pregnant with Nova sitting in the hospital, she said, when I get to this certain time frame, she's out. She's going to take him for everything he has. Detective Bethel, why would she leave Albert? Letitia, or Landon, I'm sorry, because because of her job, her lifestyle, as in freedom. Being tied to one area was has compromised her life. She can't just go to the beach. She thinks his kids have put a damper on her lifestyle. Um, Detective Bethel, what did she do for a job? Prior to, she played ball, and she was a teacher. Me and her both were teachers, and we played ball together. Um, and then she ended up, you know, getting a lot more further in her career, and we went separate paths when all this happened. And we end up being okay after they are together and after a year or so. And I'm like, ain't going to change the fact. I'm going to have to see her. Um, it's really weird. Like when you go around her, she's like, hey, how you doing? And if she's not that way, it's something totally different. Like you won't never. She's faked pregnancies to come back home. Detective Bethel, when? Last year, her brother says, and um, this was so interesting to me. So her brother speaks up and says, and whenever they were in South Carolina or whatever, then this is when I believe Al wasn't there. Remember there was some time that Letitia was said to have had him by herself? Yes. Okay, I think that's when this is, but it's, but regardless, when they were it had the house in South Carolina, there's been times Gannon would be over there. Gannon would be at my house or my mom's house. And she would keep like, she'd say Gannon is too much for her. She'd say she can't have him. Um, Bethel says, how long ago was that? That Gannon was too much. And Brandon says, oh, I can't remember how long it's been when they stayed at the beach. But she would keep Lena. But Gannon would be over there with us. And Gannon pretty much that entire time they were in South Carolina. I can't remember how long it was. A couple months. Gannon was at our house. Landon says, yeah, he would never leave. Or, yeah, he would never. Hold on. So, apparently, there's a history of Gannon being too much for her. Correct. This is the last part of it, Jen, and then we'll just chat about this part. But so, Brandon okay. says she wouldn't hardly get him. Detective Bethel, is Gannon outspoken? Landon, no, he's not outspoken. Detective Bethel, so he's not direct with his feelings or anything like that? Um, Brandon says he'll shut down. Landon says he'll talk to me. He'll come and he'll tell me basically anything. Bethel says, how does he normally handle conflict? Landon, he'll throw stuff if he can't get it in his mind. He'll get mad. He'll throw or he'll stomp. He won't hit anything, but he'll throw something. Detective Bethel, he's like your typical kid. And she says, he can't beat a game. He gets mad. And that's something they have a lot of screen time, which if you're home by yourself, you can't really like, I don't know, but he's quiet. He's, if there's kids in the house, he's always loud. He's got to be taking care of all of the kids, orchestrating it which I loved that. So he's like wanting to be in the middle, tell, you know, telling Lena not to do what she's not supposed to do, playing with Nova, that kind of thing. Like he's in the middle of all the kids all the time. Wait a minute. He's I'm in charge, it. which I like about him. You know, he's I the caretaker, which I like that. I do too. He has a huge, he was like all heart. You can tell, you know, when yes. he's being disturbed. And there is a little more. There's not, we went through all of the like major things um but the video again is linked in the description and i wish there was a way i could share this document like this transcription i typed up with you guys if you wanted it but maybe i i don't know how i could do that thank you sexy wild thing carol freaking call so you thing. can make it a google doc you can and upload it to a you can make it like upload it to a google drive and <clears throat> you can get a shareable link and uh, just share out the link. Okay. Ooh, that's you a good idea. I'll, I'll sh I'll, when we get off of here, I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll finish it, it before I do that. If you guys want, there's not much though. Like I said, we went through the most parts, but like, okay. So what stood up for you the most with all of this? How much, insight Lena uh, Landon had into 
that household, given that um, her access to the children was pretty restricted. Yeah, that's crazy. That is wild. Thank you, Carol freaking Claus. I cannot believe you. Thank you so much. That is so sweet. Thank you. And thank you, Melody. She says you girls are brilliant. Thank you again, Claus. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I agree mean, with you. Yeah. That's, That's what it was for me. For me, like the first thing was that incident with Lena. And I don't know if that's because we had talked so much about like the prior uh, rumors of abuse going on and, you know, the Gannon's friend's mom and that kind of stuff that we all talked about. Like I was wait because I, I heard a lot of rumors, but I hadn't really seen it from like Landon. But hearing it like this. Like, I bet you that's true. And thank God Lena's okay. Because if you remember in the trial, Letitia says that like Gannon was her favorite. And look how or he ended up. Yeah. That she was the closest to. Um, Jessica, it took me like three or four hours um, to do, but I stopped like once or twice for a cigarette break. It, and I think that was part of the time because there was some parts that I had to rewind a little bit. Yeah, because, and this is why, just for you guys, whenever, um, there, whenever the, um, we watch trials and the judge is like, you can't talk over each other. This is why, because Ally is doing what essentially what a court reporter would be doing. And when people talk over one another, it's very difficult to discern what they're saying, the each individual person. I thought about that today, Jen. I was like, I do not know how they do it because I really tried to type as she went to like save as much time, but I couldn't. I had to keep pausing, but she talks pretty fast too. Like in a few she, seconds, she, a lot. she does. She is a fast talker, but she has, she had so much insight into that house and it just, um, and, and it, it mainly into the dynamics, Yeah, you know, it seems to me like they both Albert and Landon did really try to co-parent and listen, parenting to being on the same page as parents is difficult. Even when under the best of circumstances, even when you live in the same house. Yeah, not, right. uh, you know, we're not pe people just don't always agree on what the best way to handle a situation is. And let's be honest, kids do not come with the owner's manual. They don't or uh, owner's manual instruction manual. They just don't. And you have to figure it out. And can you and it's and then you have the likes of Leticia, who is incredibly insecure and highly jealous of. Landon and I suspect that there is an element. Yes, I do think the lying of the about being pregnant was manipulative, but I also think there was a part of Leticia that wanted to have a child with Al as some sort of then her and Landon would be equal because she has, you know, what I'm saying, oh, and I also it would so tether Al, with her yeah, exactly. Wicked West says, it's not. I was raised by my stepdad. He was awesome to me. I felt so guilty for years. Why, despite the mama drama and mother-in-law, I couldn't bond with his kids. I think that's the one Christine wanted me to read. And then, yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. It's just crazy to hear all of it and see it all. And I don't know. Uh, I just don't know how Landon does it. I really don't. I, I feel for her so much. And I just know she felt really helpless on this day because this is one day later. She had just gotten there. You know, at this point, Letitia was still at home and she was feeling like Letitia did something. But she was also feeling like she couldn't say anything because we learn when she does. Like, can you imagine you telling your ex, hey, um, the kid can't, you know, one of our kids came to me and said that your wife, she woke up and your wife was holding a pillow over her face. And by the way, her lip is bruised and your ex being like, um, excuse me, you need to call her right now and apologize. That is absolutely wrong and ridiculous. Like, uh, -uh. I just, uh, yeah, I just there was, and there was so much wrong and Landon's mother, her motherly instinct kicked in because the story from the beginning was messed up. Okay. First you have 
he can't talk to anybody or go anywhere or do anything because a he's grounded. That was the first part of it, right? Then you have the added that um, he stayed home from school because he was sick. So he's grounded and he's sick, but you let him go to a friend's house. Yeah. Grounded, sick, and can't have his phone to even talk to his mother, but he can go to his friends. Why was he grounded right. so much, too? Like, I believe, because Al was at work, so it was probably Letitia doing most of it. And I think she was just so hateful and so, re even Landon said she was resentful, right? So she could feel yes. that. And see. She was so resentful that she probably grounded and got onto them for everything. Yes, and I think that... Um, I think it was basically, and I think this is where the conflict came in. I think that it was basically a Leticia's word against Gannon and Lena as far as what they did or did not do, right? Whether they did a chore, didn't do a chore, talked back or didn't talk back. And I have a very strong suspicion that whenever Leticia needed backup, she used the other person in the household that she manipulated the shit out of, Harley, and would call Harley in to testify. And of course, Harley, knowing that Al's going to leave, just saw, and, and that she's going to have to deal with her mother, sides with her mother. And yeah. I think at the end of the day, I think that that household, all of them learned very quickly um, l that they all walked around on eggshells around Letitia. Oh, yeah. That agree. it was easier for them to not do what they wanted or just go along to get along than to put up a, to put up resistance. But I will say children every once in a while will buck up and say no, or that's not how it happened. And for Letitia, that, that, that is all normal household conflict. When you have all, you know, multiple people living together and, you know, that people don't all, always have the same perception or agree on a situation. And that's normal. And oh, you yeah, resolve it. Get smart with me sometimes, you know what I mean? Of and I'm course. like, hey, no, no, you don't talk to me like that. <laughs> but, you know, of it's course. Normal. That's all normal. But to Letitia, she doesn't see it that way. To her, it is a personal affront. That's yes. why it's when she talks about the things that when she really listen when she describes that candle incident, not so much to um, whether it makes sense or not, because at the end of the day, that story it, it has, has so many holes, you could drive a semi through it, right? It doesn't make any sense. But listen to the way that she tells it. It it's a it's a like all of it is a personal affront to her. Even if she were telling the truth that Gannon had an accident, she took it personally. You can hear it in her voice. She yeah. she acts as if the children doing regular children things, they're doing it intentionally to make her angry. Meanwhile, according to everybody that met the do those dogs or was around the house or whatever, the dogs were completely out of control. They were peeing and pooping in the house. That's out of control to me. I understand accidents and housebreaking and all that. I've been through, I've, I've got, you know, dogs and believe me, I love my, my little furry family. I do, but I would never be making children scrub walls while my, while the animals were shitting and peeing on the floor. Like that's just, that's out of whack to me. Yeah. Makes no sense. Okay. This is the one Christine wanted me to read. Wicked West says I was almost a stepmom once. And I will be honest, the mother and the mother-in-law put such a divide with me, his kids and my kids, and I honestly wasn't liking his kids. I left. Hard to say that. She said, I'm so proud of myself now. I was honest with myself and I left. I never wanted to hurt his kids. I just couldn't get close to them. And um, I think that it's awesome that you were honest and you you did. Yeah, you did that because... Yeah, I just in the did. long run, it was but as as much like that's a hard thing to admit. It is absolutely. And you're incredibly brave to have done that to be on and and to know yourself that way, and then to come in and admit something like that. Because I think that a lot, I think that happens more often than not. And I think that you did the best thing for everybody, but most importantly for the kids to have not stayed. Yeah. Um. 
I agree with you. And I can't, I, I love when people are like brave enough to like criticize yourself or like, uh, like own the parts of themselves that aren't like so beautiful, you know what I mean? Or, you know, mm-hmm. the most, I just love that. I think that it's, yeah, shows humility or humbleness, whatever you want to say. Jay Lord says, Harley is quite manipulative in her own right. Using a baby voice, she was very much her mother's wingman. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about her inserting Harley into the story about cleaning the carpet and removing the carpet and stuff? And yeah, what do you think, Jen? Well, what I will say is I think that she inserts Harley because she knows that she has Harley over her under her thumb. And that Harley will um, go along with her story. This is why she avoided allowing Harley to speak to the cops very early until she could get Harley alone and tell her what she was going to say and what she was not going to say. I think as far as Harley goes, remember, Letitia raised her. And so there's always that element of nature and nurture in all human beings. And I think that um, it will, what, what, uh, what becomes of that with Harley remains to be seen. You, you know, I know that it's, it's, she's been away from her mom for three years, but really she hasn't because she only stopped com- communicating with her mom last November in 2022. So <clears throat> she's not, it's I don't the only way I know how to explain it is sort of similar to like when you are addicted to a substance or to alcohol, you can stop using and be clean from the alcohol or clean from the substance, right? But it takes it takes a long way to come it takes a long time to come away from the addict's thinking, addict's mentality. And I think that that's the part that Harley is in right now. I think that um, it's going to take Harley time and hopefully she can um, get therapy and break the cycle. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I think Harley is, you know, you're a product of your environment. Harley, think about this. Her entire life, this little girl was told that her dad, you know, and I know, Jen, you know all this. We've said it to each other a million times, but just to say, Harley was told her entire life that her dad was robbed with a gunpoint at his home and shot to death. Okay. She, she did not find out until the murder trial of her stepbrother, her mother's murder trial that her mom lied to her her whole life. And her dad actually just overdosed. Why do you tell a kid something even worse happened to them? Something scary that would probably, I mean, like, I just imagine me telling my kids that happened to someone we knew they're going to be like, you know, could that happen here? I just, that's a lot of information for a young child yeah. because it's, it's a hard concept, you know, and you never hear the, the, like, it's not like she told her that, which was a lie to begin with. Right. But let's say that was the truth and there's no like, but they caught the guy or the bad guys in jail. None of that. Right. It's, it's left sort of open ended. So can you imagine being a young child and finding and hearing that story and thinking that the person or per people who did this are still out free in the world? Like that would that would be scary. That's a lot of and a very messed up thing for children to, to have to hear. And then to find out all those years, all those, the years later that it was a lie and it is indicative of how isolated I think that Har- Harley must have been because she was, if you think about it, Harley uh, was surrounded by, uh, to use Letitia's words, their people, right? And yet at no time did she ever learn the truth from any of her relatives. I find that to be more the, the most interesting part because I know how it was when, when I was growing up, my mom has a ton of sisters and when they would, when all of them would get together, all you have to do is pretend like you were helping to cook and you got all the tea that was going on in the family, current tea, past tea, maybe potential future tea, all that when the sisters got together. So they gossiped and they talked and, and it was funny about it is they would all be together but one, one or two of them would be do somewhere off somewhere else. And, though, and when they were not around in the kitchen, that is when 
the other sisters who were in the kitchen would take that opportunity to talk shit about the other two that weren't in the kitchen. So like, you know, <laughs> that's why I find that fascinating is that she was around family, but never knew the truth. That's somewhat how um, it is with my family too. Like all the girls, when my cousins came down like this summer, you better believe I found out all the details of what everybody's been up to. <laughs> we were sitting around chatting about all the things, but yeah, let me see. I'm going to pull up this for a minute because I think I've got it like right on the part. I don't know. I just want to go to just a moment of this while we're talking about it because, and watch her for a second. Cause Harley, okay. you know, I feel like she gets, a lot of backlash and stuff. And I understand that people can understand how she didn't smell something, you know, different things like that. But at the end of the day, she was a child who was lied to and manipulated, probably scared to death of her mother. Look what her, she has done. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so know, let me see. I think this is right before, cause it's the manipulation. So, and I'll say this to Harley's credit. She walked her butt into the El Paso County Sheriff's Office or the DA's office, I can't remember which one it was, with no guarantee of anything and told what she knew yeah, against her mother. That is that's true. a hard thing to do. I know that as adults, we're thinking, I would just tell it, but that's because we're adults. Harley like it just became a legal adult and we all know any of us that have kiddos like i my little bendy lou she just turned 18 okay and i i already know the 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 arguments back or the the responses i'm gonna well i'm an adult okay but they're <laughs> yeah legally the law recognizes you as an adult but really let's be honest your frontal lobe isn't even done developing until you're yep. 25 so, and that's just science. Yep. So, you know, she, she's hardly has a lot to overcome. Yep. And I think if sure. she recognizes it and seeks help, I think she'll be fine. She has a lot to overcome and alone. Ooh, look who's back. Wait, is that actually her? Hold on. Let me put up an overlay just in case. I okay. Who else would, would be, would it be? You didn't share the link in chat. Oh, yeah, put up an right. overlay. <laughs> Just in case. Wait, she's putting her camera on, but I'll okay, turn it off and I'll move you. <laughs> Wait, I didn't share it in the chat. I forgot. <laughs> hey. Hi. Oh, keep going. I don't want to interrupt. I just wanted to come back because I had the opportunity. I'm waiting. Well, we're talking about Harley, and I'm about to play part of her testimony, but we were just talking about how she was manipulated her whole life, you know, She's been thrown under the bus the whole way. How Letitia intentionally places her, you know, helping her clean the carpets and things like that. Um, so, yeah, we're just talking about that. And I'm going to play her in the court. You got anything on that though before I play it? Tell the oh, yeah, tell yeah. about the proffer agreement, Jen. Would you play, tell about the proffer? She did she or did she not go into the DAs with no deal? She had no deal. No, I mean, the proffer itself is a deal. Um, and, and it just basically, it's like, it's like a limited time contract. Um, and the purpose of it is to encourage, encourage someone who they, they being the district attorney's office could charge with something if they chose to, but it gives that person the, the potential, um, the, the person that they could potentially charge with a crime. It gives them an opportunity to spill their guts. And, you know, the rules are, if you're not entirely honest, if you're not 100% honest, then, you know, then, then we will charge you, but it's, it's an opportunity. And um, so when Dave Young was saying, you know, do you know why you weren't charged? And she says, because I told the truth. I understand how she kind of confused that, but the truth is they still could have charged her. They just wouldn't have been able to use the exact details that she said during the proffer against her. Um, they still could have charged her, uh, but there was oh, a three-year okay. statute of limitations. So that okay. with a proffer, you can't use that against them, whatever they come forward with? Correct. Or, oh, okay. Yeah, I can't I use their statement against them. Right, oh. which is the, that's the motivation for them to be 100% honest. Right. Oh, wow. Okay, that makes sense. Um, 
sexy but wild thing well so didn't she sign well, her so yeah thank you for explaining that because i didn't even know that yeah okay yeah because they weren't going to charge her with accessory and i think a lot of that was just based on the fact that she was you know riding shotgun in the moving van and um and there and there were yeah, you know, just her not cooperating. And, you know, do you guys remember hearing, you know, when Harley got a little snippy on the evening of the 28th, around 10 o'clock, once, once the, she finally let people in the house and they started searching, you know, after they took Lena back to the... Sh yes. Back <laughs> okay, sorry, weirdos driving by. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but what, what the hell was I saying? That was weird. With Harley, the way that she was acting after oh, they took Lena. Yeah, she was a little snippy, and that, that made people look at her sideways, people being detectives, you know. Right. Um, and, you know, that, that, she, that she wasn't cooperating. It was, it, uh, you know, it was off-putting to detectives who were just trying to, you know, and, 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 um, and we're going to go over all this in that document that we're going to review. Um, but a lot of times in those reports from the detectives, it's not, you know, we were watching Letitia. It's we were watching Letitia and Harley. Um, and, and, and I understand why they thought that. Now, obviously, they changed their mind down the road. But, but they were looking real hard at Letitia and Harley both. And another thing that I think um, people miss is remember when the guy came in from Rhode Island and they were going and they were talking about moving van number two, the one that Letitia drove across the country. Yes. That suitcase was directly behind the driver's seat. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that's where they, they found, uh, you know, the, the blue star alerted basically. Um, right. The suitcase was directly behind the driver's seat and there was wow. a partition, but there were holes in it. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's when another the holes thing from, you know, the cab? from the cab to the I'm back. Sorry, yes. just, see, okay. I've never wow. seen, I've never seen a U-Haul like that. The, mm -hmm. uh, Cause when we packed my mom's stuff up, okay. When she passed away um, and I never, I didn't, I couldn't smell anything in the back of that moving van. Okay. But I'll never forget when I opened the moving van because my sister was going to take some stuff. Um, I, it, the whole moving van smelled like my mom. It was a good smell, but I wouldn't have been able, I couldn't smell it from the front seat of the U-Haul. That's yeah. why I was confused. That's why I didn't understand. Why did people think she should have smelled something? But now that you're saying there's whole seat, look at how thorough and how much we've talked about this. And I didn't know about no dadgum holes. I didn't either. Yeah. Can, can we take a second and address Shelly's comment? Because we are going to talk about all that stuff very soon. But Right. And, and remember that she had the air conditioner set very low. Um, you know, for somebody who loves the heat, she had, I mean, she, she had it set to a low temperature, very high. Uh, she was trying to regulate the temperature as much as she could. And, you know, they were also feeding CBD treats to the dogs. I mean, there were a lot of factors that, you know, the, the, we, anybody who tells you whether or not Harley could smell, uh, you know, the odor of decomposition is lying to you because they don't know. There's no way for anyone on this, even, even the scientist is like, yeah, it's possible. That doesn't mean that she did, right. you know, at, at some point. You know, I mean, of course we're skeptical. It's true crime. Well, what if she you know, smelled? What if she smelled something but did not recognize it as the odor of decomp? Right. Do you Listen, know what I mean? Power, right. And the power of denial is strong. And the power and, of being afraid of your mom. Yeah, is even strong. stronger. Um, Shelley says, "Have you read Lena's statement when she said Harley and Letitia had to carry Gannon to bed because he was so sick?" So I have read that. No, 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 That's why I wanted to address it. So we have read that, and we're going to go over it. But if you watch the trial, it actually came up a couple times that Lena may have possibly helped Letitia. This came up in her interview with the FBI guy when she was arrested. That long interview. What's his name? Grusing. Grusing. 
I loved him. He was great. But there was like little comments made and we had all wondered, well, it's actually, I think that whoever put that document out got it wrong because it was redacted and it said that blank and blank, but it was Lena. It was Lena. Here, can you explain it, Crown Curious? Because I know you'll Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. And I want to start by saying, Shelly, do not take this wrong in any way. Um, you know, that's one of the things that is so great about this channel and these people in this chat is that, uh, you know, especially in a case with so many twists and so many turns, it is easy to get information wrong. And I know that on that other channel, um, you know, Big D's channel, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I won't, I won't, I won't, you guys, because that's not the point. Anyway, on that other channel, it was said the other night while they were reading Lena's statement, okay, in, in that document, Lena's name is redacted, Harley's name is redacted, Landon's, Albert's, everybody's but Letitia's. Um, and, and so they were guessing that what it said is that Harley helped Letitia bring Gannon down the stairs and then they they took it a step further and said you know I know people think it was Lena but there's no way an eight-year-old could have you know could have done that that it's it's misinformation it's not true and I'm not saying they did it on purpose everybody has a right to be wrong this is how we learn together um, but I can tell you with a hundred percent certainty um, even you, you can even tell if you really study that document you can tell whose name it is by the length of the redaction mark um and it came out in the trial lena helped gannon with or lena helped leticia bring gannon from lena's bed down to gannon's bed yeah and that is heartbreaking unfortunately it is true lena is the one who helped her harley was at work she wasn't home yet yeah. And, um, but it's just so easy, even that small of a detail, it's so easy, um, because it's presented as fact on that other channel and it's just not true. Um, unfortunately, I mean, not that it would be fortunate if it really were Harley, it's right. unfortunate whoever it is, but the truth is that Lena helped Letitia bring Gannon from Lena's bed down to Gannon's bed. And then Harley came home and then Letitia and Lena gave Harley the details of what happened because Harley was confused about what actually happened for most of the night. You know, yes. the message she was getting at work. Um, so Shelly, please don't take like in no way, like I, I hope Shelly that you're as okay as we are when, when we find out we had a detail that was a little bit off, but but then we go back and then we figured out where we were off and then it all kind of comes together like a puzzle. That's all we're really doing together is putting puzzles together. And yeah. this case is one hell of a puzzle. It definitely is. And um, we're going to go through that document and talk about like her interview, but no Jordan. So this happened the night before. I don't know if he had been drugged or what. We know there was hydrocodone in his system. But Lena says that his legs weren't working and he was like he could his legs weren't working. That's why she helped carry him. And then the officer even goes as far enough to say that she asked, how was he laying? And Lena laid out like and laid her, you know, laid down and showed physically with her body how he was laying. Um, uh -huh. So it was definitely Lena. She even describes like in that same interview how it looked and that kind of thing. Um, right. And it was presented that Harley helped Letitia carry Gannon's dead body down the stairs. He was still alive. He was most likely drugged. That makes the most sense. I can't, I can't say, you know, I can't show you in one of the documents or interviews or testimonies or, you know, all of those points that we use to make sure that we're right with these details. Um, but we saw him, the, you know, that was the even the night of the 26th and we saw him walking again, sluggish the next yeah. day on camera. Um, so, so it's just, you know, and, and, and I just, you know, I get crazy about just those little details, not because I have to be right, not because I want to point out that other people are wrong, but just because that, that channel putting out that misinformation and then, um, and any, any time misinformation goes out, uh, it spreads. And, and, and what's that old saying about, you know, a lie can make it, around the world two times before the truth even gets its boots on. Um, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying it's on purpose. 
No, I think but, it was just simply like a miss, uh, especially if you didn't watch right. the trailer like we watched it, us three. We watched every single moment of and took notes on every day of every moment. So if you were, I, I were watching, then it will tie back to the trial because in the trial, it comes up in some of the stuff with grusing and stuff. Like right. I don't remember exactly where, but it does. Right. And then, and then, it, and then it's like this confirmation bias thing where people who are already, uh, you know, looking at Harley sideways and thinking that she's, you know, sus, uh, it, it becomes a confirmation bias. And then they hear Harley helped Letitia bring Gannon's dead body down to the basement. And they're like, see, I told you, I told you she was rotten to the core. And, and it's just like this natural thing, be, but it's just, it's just not, it's just not true. Thank you and, so much, uh, Amber. Um, she, well, listen to this. How do you think? Because he had to have been drugged. Not to interrupt you. I'm sorry, but Jordan says, uh, um, as a "Nurse, I'm not sure if she gave him one pill would make him like that. She must have gave him a lot." What do you think about that? Because I also don't think like one hydrocodone would make. But I don't know. You know, maybe it would. But how would she get their big pill? So if it was a lot, how would that even, you know, I don't know how that would work. It doesn't, it's hard to make sense of. Yeah. I mean, and there's nothing we can do other than speculate. Al doesn't even remember how many were in the bottle. Um, right. You know. Yeah. It was Jordan. Al had an old prescription from what was the injury he had? He cut his finger. He cut off the tip. Of, yeah. Uh, See how I remember okay, those guys, details. We'll do it this again. is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do it to you again, and I'm gonna jump back down because now I'm gonna go to my next destination. But see, I'm just addicted to you guys. I'm like, oh, there's Wi-Fi. Let me get back on Streamyard. Oh, good. <laughs> back. I wanted to tell you, too, Allie, if you want to send me that document, uh, the transcription, I yeah. will um, put it on CrimeCurious.com and make it. Uh, you know, I'll put it with the rest of the downloads. Okay. Yes, I definitely. Oh, will. there you go. That's a good idea. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's yeah. Just, just email it to me, and I'll put it up on the website tonight. Um, because you know, we encourage everyone to do their own research and come back, and let's all discuss it. Yeah, absolutely. And then I'll email it to you tonight. And then if I go back and get the last part, I'll email that part. You know, I don't, there's not like I said, most of. The information is when in what we went through, but at the very end, I did cut off, which is, you know, Al comes back in and stuff or Al comes in the room. <laughs> but OK, awesome. Thank you so much. Aries says, yeah. where are you heading? Crime curious. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking my son home. All right. Well, drive safe. I will say hi, my son. Hi, my son. <laughs> <laughs> hey, son. Can you tell me mine? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll talk to you next time. Okay. All right, babe. Bye. Bye, bye again. Oh, by the way, who was it? Who was it? Was it Aries? Oh my gosh, I can't remember who it was now. But last time I was leaving, somebody said something in the chat about "Don't go." Oh yeah. I Oh, uh, now I feel bad because I can't remember who it was. It was hilarious. I saw that. I think it was Trish. It was Trish Eddy. Yeah, it was Trish Eddy. That's who it was. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Oh, well, and I just listened to that, too. Okay. All right. I love you guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Jen, I've had you forever, so I'm going to let you go in a minute, but let's just watch like a okay. minute of this week's it's called the manipulation part of her testimony. I think it'll be interesting. Okay. Remember, Letitia was even flipping off and doing her shit with her daughter. <sighs> Letitia sucks the end. <laughs> yes, she does. This morning, you talked about learning about how your father actually died. Do you remember that? Yes. Is that what we're talking about? The manipulation that's been going on for years is finally coming to your realization? Yes. And do you remember when you were talking to us back in August, uh, the questions I was asking you about why we were considering filing charges on you? Um, yes. Do you remember you, me asking you, what would you explain to a jury about driving cross country with a body in a suitcase in the back of that van? What would you tell the jury? Do you remember that question? Yes. Tell this jury, 
whether or not you knew that Gana's body was back in that van and why. I, the thought just never came across my mind. I just never thought my mom would do that. Um, I didn't see her to be the person to do that. So I never even like questioned it. Like it just never came up. And what would happen if you did question it? I too would just say like, don't question me. Like, um, like saying it was back talking or. Mr. Tomini was asking you questions about any relationships between the time your father and her separated and divorced by the time that she married Albert Stout. Okay, so that's all I'll play of that. But regardless, you can see the effect it's had on her. You hear her talk about her dad and not knowing that. You see that, you know, <clears throat> She did not dream that Letitia would do this. She's not the only one. Even as Landon, with what I read you guys tonight, as she's given that interview, pointing out all the red flags, all the reasons that she thinks Letitia's lying, she still does not believe that Letitia would physically hurt him. She believes that he would have she would have someone come and get him or something like that. And that's at the I'll add that to the transcription um, when I, it's at the end. But she still, you know, doesn't believe that. So I think that her own daughter, it makes perfect sense that she didn't suspect that to be what happened, in my opinion. But I have to agree. I think that um, <clears throat> I think Harley explains it. And I'll tell you what, if I'm wrong about this. It, at some point, you know, Harley, people are, are going to keep, not everybody, but there will be people that will keep up with Harley. But I can promise you that if Harley ever pulls any type of shenanigan because of her connection to this case, it will make the news. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm, I am at this point, she is young enough and I haven't personally seen anything from Harley, that would let, let me believe that she cannot overcome the situation that she was raised in. Because I do believe that there, yes, there is an element and it's a combination, in my opinion, of both nature and nurture. But I also believe that when you recognize a flaw in your, or just anything that you want to change, about yourself or your circumstances, some things are harder to do and, and take longer to work on, but it can be done if you want to. And so I think that for Harley, I think I'm, I'm just hopeful that she can recognize, okay, I might have some of this, these personality traits or such, you know, whatever, that I, I got from my mom or a way of thinking that I learned from my mom. I don't want to be that way. I'm got, so I'm not going to be that way. I'm going to work every day not to be like that. You know what I mean? People, you can do that. Yes, she absolutely can. And I mean, think about it. People overcome addictions and all kinds of things all the time. I, I believe right. that she, she, she will be. And I also agree with you. If she was part of something that would, um, that would make the news, you know? Yes. And I'll say this too, with, with people overcome and break the cycle of abuse all the time. It, it It's hard. It takes work, but you can do it. I mean, there are children who have been horribly, horribly abused, abused in every way that you can imagine. And they grow up and they go on to have children of their own and they break that cycle. It ha It happens. So I think at this point, let's let's give her a little grace. Yeah, because we don't know what it was like to grow up in that. I mean, look how look how she just listen to those pretext calls. OK, now, Al is Al. Right. And he's in the military. He's around. He's, you know, around guys all the time. And, and he is in a position of authority in the military. Right. So he's a, bossing people around all the day. Right. The, he, but Letitia can get him talking in circles and go, chasing his own tail. And all she has to do is say like two or three words. 
Yeah. Can you, right. and, and he's new to the situation, right? Re- relatively speaking. I mean, Harley has been in that situation since her, day one. Okay. Al is a, time wise, like a newcomer to Leticia's brand. Right. But he's very quickly indoctrinated. Yeah. Very quickly, doesn't want to be confrontational with her, doesn't want to. Like, I thought it was interesting in his interview. She calls and, um, you know, he tells her that he's at the police station. Well, then the cops, they want to talk to her. So they ask him to call Letitia. And this man who has talked to this woman every day, knows all of her shenanigans, knows her game is nervous about calling her and he's asking the, the the detective what should i say how should i act because he knows what he's in for because he knows Letitia's bullshit oh god yeah well it would be like i said like you know the people that make you do like mental gymnastics you're just completely exhausted after i oh that's just her on steroids like she's like that on steroids you know what i mean she's like being on steroids doing mental gymnastics that kind exactly of thing. now i love i do i'm not gonna lie i do enjoy a game of mental chess i'm not gonna i do enjoy that to an extent <laughs> but when it comes to the people that i live with on a day-to-day basis my family even my like parents extended family i don't want to i don't want to have to play mental chess with those no. people or your that, friends, so, with, or your, or my friends, day to day stuff. Yeah, right. I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to. I don't want that type. It's too exhausting, and I, you know, it's. I just don't want to do it. Because on some level, yeah, it means I don't trust you, and I don't have people in my circle that I don't trust. No, me neither. Period. And I totally- okay, now before we go, I wanted to share a link with you guys. So, true crime nope. investigate. He's been on the panel before, but he's done a lot of Delphi stuff. He had a video Ooh. that's coming out tonight that's like a reenactment of the probable cause affidavit and stuff. So I was going to share that if you guys are interested in Delphi. I think that it will be pretty interesting. I'm definitely going to check it out. I know it was going on like while we were live. So, um, but yeah, it's going in the chat now. You guys check that out. And then uh, all the links that the mods dropped and the night bot for your channel, Jen, please go check out Jen's channel and another Jen's channel, uh, the word case studies and crime curious. They have excellent channels. Also when these, when we like here in the very near future, we're going to start talking about this case file and we're going to do it. We're going to try to do it on all channels, right? Like Jen's going to do her own thing sometimes. We all will, but we're going to talk about it together as well. And we're going to, um, talk soon about the forensic interview with Lena and some of that stuff. And that some of that will be on Jen's channel as well. So make sure, well, on both of their channels. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. And then I'm going to drop them one more time in the chat. And then is there anything, Jen, you have before we go that you want to add? Yes. Okay. So then tomorrow night, we're continuing our series. I'm so sorry that um, I we didn't get to do it this Sunday, but I was all weirded out by this hurricane. I, there was something about this one that was just, usually I blow them off. I'm not going to lie. And I shouldn't be that kind of person. I watch, but this one I kept like, it even took me away from the Dinkins trial. And y'all know how invested I was in that. I'm still invested. I've caught up all up on it and I'm going to be ready to talk about that on Monday, but I digress. Tomorrow night, we're going to be over on my channel. And we're going to uh, continue our serial Sunday. So be looking for that. I have been, I've, I've got the thumbnail already. I'm not going to tell you what it's about till we're ready to schedule it. So just be looking for it. And then um, <clears throat> I'm also working on a video um, just because I don't know how long this judge is going to take deliberating um, for Dinkins, but but there's also that other trial that happened in South Carolina with the same judge who um, heard the Murdoch trial. I just love him. And I want to cover that case because I thought it to be very, very interesting. I, um, it, they were both tried together, which is uh, always an, it makes for an interesting trial. So I, I want to talk about that. But the video I'm working on is about Henry Dinkins, who he is, how uh, the charges that he had prior just his history. Um, So look for that too. That should be, I'll probably have that done tomorrow. 
Well, I'm excited for all of it. Um, I was really surprised by how many people were interested in that trial by the end of it, the Dinkins one. So I'm glad you're going to catch up on that. And then I'm so excited for tomorrow night. It'll be fun. And Me then too. for us to go through this case file, like I'm excited. Me but too. It's a little overwhelming because there's so much, you know what I mean? It's like, ah, where do you start? And yeah, but I'm excited. <laughs> and, and just so you guys know, part of the... Part of the reason that I wanted to get this, we we all wanted to get this start with this part of it is because um, I I'm I'm working on that documentary um, to tell Gannon's story, and all that I really had was the trial, and the trial really focused on Letitia's baloney, and I really wanted to. Um, talk I it's I, I wanted to know how the investigation went and the only way that you can know that is to be able to read the um, detectives reports and so um, I wanted to I want you know to be able to use that in that documentary and I wanted to talk to you guys all about it because we all watched that trial together our hearts yep. all broke for for Al and Landon and for Gannon and for Lena and for Harley too I mean look it's a it's a throw off it's it's messed up and it will throw a person off when they find out that their mother is the epitome of evil. You know, like you can know like you know, like mom mothers and daughters have sometimes um, tumultuous relationships and there's tension, especially in the teenage years. I know I was difficult and I gave my mom a run for her money all the time. Me too. So, yeah. you know, that's that's kind of how it goes, but it's a whole different thing when you find out that your mom murdered your stepbrother and oh. then you find out the details that's yeah. got, to, that's got to mess you up. It definitely does. I, oh, I don't know. I, I hope that she, you know, she looks to be happy and doing well. I'm glad that she's yes. in a relationship and happy. I hate the hearing those calls with Brenda and all that stuff. That's really yeah. unfortunate, but you know, it is. If you really want to glimpse into into um, her um, their relationship, there are some there are some jail calls between uh, Leticia. There's a lot of them, but there's one specific one. And the one specific one, let's, she uh, Leticia was on the phone with somebody else. I can't remember who it was now. And then and this person gives her this information about Harley maybe being adopted by this other family, blah, 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 and selling dresses. And um, Leticia is pissed. And she gets on the phone with Harley, and Harley calls her mom, and here comes Leticia. And I can't make my voice do what she did, but it was so cold. She said, don't call me mom. And it, it's, it, was, it was fucked up to begin with. Sorry, Allie. It was messed up to begin with, but it was the le it was how cold her voice was. That is a, 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 just a tiny little glimpse into their relationship. It was messed up. Yeah, I did not. Well, see, I, I was not too keen on listening to all that stuff because it was hard for me to focus and actually hear it all. I want to try to get some of it ourselves. Yes, but, I uh, do too. Yeah. Um, and this will thank you for being here. And you're right. Thank you guys who helped us get the case file. I cannot like say thank you enough. You guys are awesome. I can't wait to go through it with you guys. And yeah, I'm just, very, I forgot very that part as well. Thank you guys so much because um, I think when we go through these together, all of us, I think we're going to have a better understanding of the investigation um, because the trial is part of it. it. It talks about the investigation, but it's really pared down. And I, you know, I'm so grateful that you guys were able to help us. I, you know, thank you so much. We really, yeah. really, really appreciate it. And so, the documents are for the people. So we're exactly. not going to lord over them for five ever. We just want an opportunity to go through them. And we just got them yesterday. Yes. Um, oh, and also, Jen, I remember. OK, so when I started my TikTok I had been like watching YouTube, not lives. Like, I don't think there were lives. I was watching like the Unmasked series. When I started watching lives, it was like Amber and Kelly were some of the first actually. Um, but <laughs> I was um, doing like little TikTok videos and watching um, like WTAF with this case, Plunder, um, Unmasked, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, 
And I remember Orin and Orson West had had not been missing long. And I remember it like the day Gannon went missing. I remember Plunder put out a video like that day or the next day. And I followed it from then. I can remember like details. Like I remember when Letitia was arrested, he had not been found yet. And like yes. the press conference. And I remember just sitting on the couch crying because he was the same exact age as Trenton at the time. Mm. And yeah. It just, it's a case that like, it's been years. You know, I remember when she had her pretrial hearing, I covered it on my channel. There were no cameras around allowed, but there were live tweets. And um, when we were reading through it, like I, I'll never forget what because we didn't know anything about the condition that he was in. And I'll never forget. We heard about the defensive wounds on his hands and like mm -hmm. I, I, I cried. You know, everybody cried. It was so oh, I was just it's never reaching. Yeah, it is. And it's been like a really long journey. I'm just happy to be able to see it all, to get to go through every little detail with you guys. Like, yeah, I'm excited because there's those cases that just become like part of you. This is one for me. Like, yes. for sure. Gannon was, for, and it, I, even though I followed it all, see, because when they charged Leticia, um, you know, Gannon hadn't been found in those those are difficult cases. And I was like, what, you know, I was waiting to hear what they had that would make them. And yes, Aries pork, Sau uh, Sauron does. Yeah. Sauron and Leticia would make, although I'm not sure because they, they both want to be in charge. That might be a problem. Oh, well, uh, too bad, Leticia. Anyway. So, um, I remember thinking, how were they, what they, what did they find? And I followed it and then they found him and they found him in Florida. And I thought to myself, my God, you know, it, it Gannon's yeah. case got to me. And then when we heard and then learning things in the trial that we didn't previously know, like the order of the events, that was, oh you God. know, I remember that and telling and I remember me and Allie both were just like sh shocked because we thought for sure that yeah, it was I'm a different shocked. order. I'm still shocked in. I still am like, what? I, yeah, me too. And and the one, the one only the only the one question and are there always are, is our questions at the end of the trial, is that damn candle? I just I'm no I I have made peace that I'm never gonna know because even if I were to like ask Letitia, you know she'd just give me some flim flam BS story and you know give me the runaround for eleven billion hours. So uh, then I would just get frustrated and be like I'm out. Yeah. Um, but well, you know, like that's the, for me, that that's the one thing left over from the case that just never did get answered. Like what the hell was with uh, the candle? I know. What was the truth of what happened there? What actually yes. started in, in general, what started this? What was yes. the floor? We know that I believe she was just trying to cover up the blood, but what was the order of all that happened? And why was it on the couch on the floor? Like, yes, yes, yes. It sucks because we never will unless one day she was to pff, tell the truth. Yeah, but she, even if she did, we wouldn't. It's kind. It's about like Chris Watts, you know, yeah. like everybody wants to know. But then you know that Chris Watts is a lying liar mouth who tells lies. So even if he did say, we'd be still side eyeing. So there, I don't think that there would ever be able to be resolved with some of these cases and some of these questions because of the person that we need to, you know, that knows the truth, but we can't trust them because they're lying liar mouths to tell lies. Yeah. I know you're right. You're but I can't think of anybody. I would rather like, you know, discuss this. I'm glad that we thank you guys again so much for getting, helping us to get these documents and letting us, uh, you know, get, some some questions answered because there are, there were other ones but you know yes absolutely thank you so so much I'm so and I can't I'm so Stop. glad to do it with you and curious Jen <laughs> get down <laughs> hey Sorry, you guys Mac Dunn oh. woke up from his nap choosing violence he's trying to get after Alice and then he tried to type on the computer so thank you guys for being here well I'm gonna thank let you, you go we'll, uh, take yeah. care of this. I'm I'm sure that. Uh, Bentley's probably hopefully he's asleep but um, I don't know yeah. I gotta get to figure out what's going on there too yes and yes yes 
All right. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Jen. Make sure you check out the channels we dropped. And yeah, I'll see you really soon. Bye. 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 And thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go, I got to say this again. Just because okay. I want to Thank you to Lonard Amber and Jordan and Sexy Wild Thing Claws and Sexy Wild Thing Claws again and Daisy Daisy and Jojo and Pepper and LJ Sunflower, Tamara, Glowbug, B Crumbs, Katrina, Donna, Lynette, and I know MK and I think Nay Gifted. Thank all you guys. You guys rock. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Okay. Bye. Bye.